He was referred to as the devil. He was the HMRC of drug dealers. You definitely don't want this fella knocking on your door. Mr. Stephen French. I said he's called Britain's Hardest Man. Season one, episode one. Most viewed, most watched. And he shouted, Frenchy, have you heard on the radio? Somebody's been shot. Listen to the radio. Ask me, brother, you've got to find Stephen French. If anybody knows where the tapes are, he'll know the where the tapes are. Yeah, yeah, you said to me that you're no longer the devil. You just said that I have proof. Can you just lift your hat off? I just want to make sure you've got any horns. <laughs> <laughs> they labelled me a police informer and a grass. These young fellas, weren't you? And they're going to get you. I was offered £50,000 to snitch. Expose the corrupt men in positions of authority and power. Men like Richie Sunak. I've been George Floyded before George Floyd. Sweat box to director's box. Sat in the number one chair in Anfield and he gives me a red fire engine with a yellow ladder on it and a bell. And I started to hear that bell ding again because he tried to touch me to Welcome back to season three of the Criminal Connection podcast. I want to say a massive thank you to all our season three sponsors. We love you. Big thanks to our sponsor, IME. This global tech outfit ain't missing about. They've got these slick video interviews that have you connecting like there's no tomorrow. Whether you're running a business, running the streets, or doing your own thing. Perfect for those in marketing, recruitment, admissions, and even for auditions. And their platform, Smooth as Silk, designed with you lot in mind. IME's the ticket to making those connections count. A big thanks to Wildcrest Events for sponsoring the show. From adrenaline pumping, sporting events, to chart topping sensations, Wildcrest Events have them all. Make sure you drop them a line down below. And if you put in CCP5 off, you will get a 5% discount. Now that's a proper, proper good deal. I want to say a massive shout out to our sponsors, VIP Security Services. VIP Security Services have been running for 35 years. We offer security solutions for our Essex, London, and all the home counties. VIP Security Services will protect you, your home, and your business. Prevention is always better than cure, and you're in safe hands with VIP Security Services. So if you'd like to find out about any of our fabulous sponsors, make sure you check out the links in the description below. Welcome back to the Criminal Connection podcast. My name's Terry Stone, AKA The Podfather. Today, we've got a very special guest by the name of Stephen French. He was referred to as the devil. He was the underworld tax man back in the day. He was the HMRC of drug dealers. And at his peak, he had a fortune of 20 million pounds sterling. And he was a British, European and world kickboxing champion. You definitely don't want this fella knocking on your door. Please put your hands together for Mr. Stephen French. Woo! <laughs> Thank you very much for that introduction. Yeah. Well, I'm ready to rumble now, Stephen. So, uh, so you know, I, I, I mean, I've, I've obviously followed your journey. Um, I've obviously read your book, which I thought was unbelievable. I mean, just, you know, when you read something, you just sort of think how, how mad, you know, your, your well, life's been. You see, you see. Here's the interesting thing with regards to the book. The book is an autobiography, it's an account. Everything in the book is true, yeah? I haven't told no lies, yeah, right? But uh, the book came out in 2007, yeah? Um, the book sold 45,000 copies, yeah, right? Which is for that type of book, yeah, it's extremely good numbers. Can you just let the audience know what the name of the book was? Because The book was called The Devil Britain's most feared underworld taxman. And the author was Graham Johnson. Although I wrote the book, he edited it and put put it together. He had the, he had the deal. Yeah. Uh, but he wrote it in the th he wrote it in the third person. He wrote it as me. Yeah, you right. Because that made the stories flow. Yeah. And it was used, it, it, the, the vernacular used was the vernacular of the street. But what I'd like the viewers to know, tell, yeah, yeah. Right, right, is that it wasn't about my own personal glorification. It wasn't about uh, 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 any narcissistic qualities, because I've also been called, I've been, I've been list labeled at quite a lot of things, and one of them's a narcissist as well. Yeah, right. It was an, it was an aim to an end. Yeah. It's 2000 
and six. Christmas time. I'm on Paradise Island in the Maldives. And I'm watching the sun come out of the Indian Ocean. Great big ball of fire. And I have this inspiration. And the inspiration that I have is to turn this horror story of my life into some good use. And I decided that I wanted to write a book, do a documentary with a view to getting a, a, a movie deal. Yeah, right? Because I needed 25 million quid to build the Andrew John Memorial Skill Center. And I'll tell you who Andrew John is in a short while. Let me just finish this little se segue. Yeah, the skill center would be a center that knows no race, no creed, no background. And it would teach our young men a skill so they could provide for themselves and their families without being involved in drugs, gangs, violence, or becoming pistoleros. Yet because Andrew John was my brother. He was murdered in 1991, shot five times in the back by a guy that had more reason to shoot me. Wow. Yeah, I was just fortunate at the time that I wasn't with him. Yeah, I was on remand in Wainwood Scrubs. D-Wing was the remand. D-Wing or C-Wing was the remand wing, yeah? And I always remember one screw there because he reminded me of Robin Hood because his name was Mr. Sherwood, yeah? Mr. Sherwood gave me a real hard time. But I was, I was tooed up with one of the A-team's nephews, yeah? And he liked me, yeah? And he was with me when I got the news that my brother died. Yeah, because in 91, it was still slop house. There were some lads from County Farm on the fours and they shouted, Frenchy, have you heard on the radio? Somebody's been shot. Yeah, your neck of the woods came back, listened to the radio. Andrew John, karate champion, shot dead Toxtiff. And I said, I can't remember the nephew's name, but I said to him, that's my brother. He said, no, that's not your brother. Stop messing about Scouts. They used to call me Scouts when I was in that, that jail. But then the door goes to the wing governor, the chaplain, yeah, and the doctor. The wing governor was there because he was required to be there. The Catholic priest was there to tell me my brother was dead, yeah, and the, uh, and the doctor was there to give me the liquid kosh because I was a handful in that jail. Mr. Sherwood was always giving me a hard time. And I don't really remember the topography, but apparently Wainwood Scrubs is by White City. Yeah, yeah, right. And all the screws drink in a pub by White City. Yeah, yeah. He told his family, his family had a word with them. With, with them. One day I'm shaving and thinking, he come in, he said, Mr. French, I'd like to apologize. Um, you'll have no more problems from me. And they obviously had had a word with him. And I just told him, okay, off you pop. Yeah, right. And that was my time in Wormwood Scrubs. Yeah. And it was the death of my brother that made me give up my life of crime. Yeah, right. Because him and I, together, we were something else. Yeah. And one of us had to go. Yeah, one of us had to go. And the kid that killed him had more reason to want to kill me. Yeah. The devil, nickname, I came home from Paradise Island with the idea of writing this book. I was going to call the book Tall, Dark, and Dangerous. Graham Johnson, the author, came to Liverpool and he was looking for, he'd been told there was some tapes for the John Haas and Paul Benny who were pardoned 
because they give up a massive cache of arms. Something to do with the, one of the Tory leaders. I think it was William Hague. It was one of them. I can't remember which, which Tory leader it was. Yeah, but one of his family lived in Liverpool and there was a rumour that he'd taken a bung, allegedly, because I don't want to get myself into no trouble. Yeah, yeah, and they got a pardon, yeah. Graham Johnson was in Liverpool and he was told if you go to Liverpool, you've got to find Stephen French because Stephen French has got his finger on the pulse at Liverpool. And if anybody knows where the tapes are, he'll know the t where the tapes are. He's seen me, found me in the living room somewhere, yeah, right? We had a conversation. When I first met him, I thought he was there. He was, uh, old Bill, just sniff, sniffing around. Then I realised who, who he was. Now, in 1971, I was an 11 year old boy. Yeah. And the Sunday magazine, the Sunday Observer magazine, came to Liverpool to do an article. Yeah, yeah, right. On the South End. It was called, it wasn't called Toxic, it was called the South End. Yeah. And the, uh, uh, the young Black Panther Party. Yeah, yeah, right. Affiliated to. Uh, uh, the American Black Panthers, yeah. So we had one, I was only a kid, yeah, right, right. I was always trying to join, I was always with the, with the older boys. And in the cathedral, they took an iconic photograph. Yeah, and I could remember that photograph. I've got a very good memory, and I could remember it was the Sunday Observer magazine. I could remember it was 1971. And I said to Graham Johnson, if you can find that photograph, yeah, yeah, I'll do a book with you. Because sidebar, I always knew that I'd write a book. And I always knew beforehand that that picture would be in that book. Yeah. And only he can verify this story. Yeah, yeah, right? He went and found a picture. Yeah. We wrote the book. And in the course of his research in Liverpool, he was told, that guy's the devil. Yeah, that guy's the devil. Yeah, yeah. He used to terrorize people, burn them with an iron, torture them, yeah, steal the money from them. He was a scourge. Yeah. Can I can I just you, you know, yeah, you said to me that you're no longer the devil. Yeah. Just said that I have proof. Can you just lift your hat off? I just want to make sure you ain't got any horns. <laughs> <laughs> you're not the devil. You're not yeah. the devil. Yeah. You're the saint no, now. No, listen, listen. No, no, I'm not, not a saint. Right. Yeah, okay. right, 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 right. It's a generic term. Yeah, right. It's a generic term. Yeah, yeah right. Because and and it's it's good that you made that joke because it moves into this segue. Right. Graham Johnson came back to me. And he said, this book's got to be called The Devil. So I said, no way, man. No way you calling the book The Devil. Yeah. And, and we're backwards and forward. I said, okay, let's, let's call it They Call Me The Devil. So he said, no. He said, you don't understand the commercial grab of the name The Devil. Yeah. So, in, so I said to him, okay, well, allow me yeah, right, to write the preface and the... And, and a forward, yeah, right, where I can explain why it's called a devil. Because I actually believe in the Holy Trinity, yeah, and, and my mum's a devout, a devout Catholic, you know. So I wanted to explain why I was doing that. That's never, you have to read the book to understand that, yeah, yeah right? So I, I acquiesced because of the commercial grab, yeah, right? because I had an agenda, yeah. To write the book, yeah, yeah, to do a documentary and to make a movie. Yeah. So we did the book and the book was a runaway success. Yeah. As a result of that, Zigzag Promotions, I believe it was Zigzag Promotions. Tiger Promotions was Russ, Russ Kemp. Zigzag Promotions were working with Danny Dyer. Yeah. And they wanted to do it was, it was 2008 now, the book came out 2007, and they're doing a series called Britain's Hardest Men, season one, episode one, yours truly. Yeah, most viewed, most watched. Um, so we've done the documentary, yeah. Hmm. What I didn't plan for 
or what it didn't. I knew with the work I was trying to do, yeah, you're right, that there'd be some backlash for me. Right. Yeah. And I knew that there'd be some blowback for me. Yeah, right. But I'm a very robust man. Yeah, you're right. And and eh, eh, eh. like I say in Danny Dyer, I'm one hard to kill. You understand? Yeah, and I don't fright, I'm not frightened of anybody. What I didn't realize is how my life would change when I went on TV. Yeah, and and how that would impact on people. Yeah, yeah. And how it would impact on my immediate family. Yeah, because I call them the skid marks and no marks. Yeah, yeah right, right. That type of wearing the keyboards. Yeah, the, the, don't say anything to your face. Yeah, right. But just hate. Just pure hate. It's a hobby now, isn't it, for people well, in this well, country? Well, whatever, whatever they're doing, yeah. But for me, it became a little bit more than that. Yeah, right? Because uh, in 2008, and here's some receipts now. In 2008, Panama, the, the BBC programme Panorama. Panorama, yeah. Did a programme called Young Gunmen. Now, on Young Gunmen, you will see the bullet, bullet holes where the bullets were fired at me for the work that I'm doing. Yeah. If you, if you flip to the Danny Dyer story, yeah, yeah. I set, up, I set up an interview with a lot of the young black lads in, in Liverpool, yeah, right, that was convinced that I was a police informer because of the work that I was doing, yeah. And you see them, if you look on the Danny Dyer program, there's a scene where there's about a dozen masked up young black guys, pitbull bulls snarling everywhere, yeah, yeah. And there's one young man and he says, Stephen, Stephen French might have been feared in the day, but Stephen French can't come round here anymore. Stephen French is a grass. He got shot at over there. Yeah, right? And they're the shots that are on the Panorama program. Yeah, they're the receipts for that. People were trying to kill me. Yeah, they're on, on those because they say I make it up. They did a couple of the receipts. Go and look at the P Panorama program. Yeah. Yeah, so they labeled me a police informer and a grass. I've been on the James English podcast to answer those questions. I've been on the uh, Sean Atwood uh, podcast to answer those questions, but I'll answer them for you again. Yeah, right. Just to reiterate, yeah, and to clear things up. Yeah. The first time somebody tried to kill me, I was. 17 years old. Yeah, yeah, right? They tried to stab me in the neck. I got my left hand up and the blade went into my hand. You see my fingers tell? Yeah. They don't come up. Yeah, yeah. It's accident got, having... No, no, no. It's my, my sinews are sold there. Three right. of the sinews got pinged like a rubber band. Right. Yeah, right? So the sold, the sold in are not there. And that's why these, that's why those fingers don't come up. Yeah? Because the short, the tendons shorten down. The important thing is you can still make a fist up, right? Make a left up. <laughs> I come to that. I right. come to because I thought I thought I was wounded seriously. Right. Right. My left up became my best weapon. Right. Yeah, yeah. My left up became my best weapon. Yeah. I'm 17 years of age. I'm and this is a strong point that I'm making now. Yeah. About not being a snitch. Yeah. The police came and see me. And he said, we know who stabbed you, Stephen. Yeah, 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 you've got to make a statement. You've got to do this, you've got to do that. I told him that I was mugged. Yeah, I wasn't mugged. I was stabbed off a family member. Yeah, yeah, right. Tried to stick a knife in my neck. We're kind of crazy in our family. Yeah. Uh, um, but I'm not going to send one of my family members to prison. You understand? So that didn't happen. Okay. I'm 17. Hold that age in your mind. The young man who's in the Danny Dyer program shouting, Stephen French is a grass. Yeah, 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 yeah. When he was 17, yeah, he gave evidence in a murder trial. Yeah, and he pointed at the alleged murder from the dock. The last time I checked, 
You make statements and you point at somebody from the dock, you're the snitch. Now his arguments over that is he was only 17. And that's why he did it, because he was only 17. Well, when I was 17, I was stabbed. I was the victim and I didn't snitch. It was just his friend that was killed. Nothing happened to him and he snitched. Yeah. So I got his debts because they're free. Yeah. And I sent him, I sent them to him when he was in prison. As a result of that, Maisie Side Police, DCI Lynch wrote to me. I said, you gotta come in, your life's in serious problems and serious danger. Came in to see them. They said, look, Stephen, you're in trouble, man. These young fellas want you. Yeah? And they're gonna get you. Yeah, they're gonna kill you. We wanna put that crew away. They're a very, very dangerous crew. And we wanna put them away. We've got some officers that we need to see, yeah, yeah, right? So I said, okay, I'll go and see these officers, yeah, right? But I'm a court for secreting <laughs> recording devices about my body, yeah, to keep a record of what's happening to me, yeah, yeah, right? So I went to Rose Lane Police Station, yeah, and officers with no insignia interviewed me, yeah. And they offered me, they said, we can't expunge your record, but we can give you the new identity for you, your wife and your daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can give you the stipend of 50,000 pounds a year. Yeah, yeah. I was offered 50,000 pounds to snitch. Yeah, you're right. The police told me the name of the guy that shot me. All they wanted to do is have me confirm it. Yeah, I didn't tell them the name. Yeah, the name was Kwame Terry. Yeah. In around about, that was two ways. In around about 213, 214, Kwame Terry, who ruled the streets that I used to rule by fear and respect. Yeah, yeah. His crew was finally round up. And between them, they got a hundred years prison. Nothing to do with me. Yeah, yeah, right. I could have put them away a, a years earlier. I refused. Yeah, yeah. And this Kwame Teddy, as a 17 year old boy, yeah, when his friend was killed, snitched. Yeah. These are the intricate details that I'm bringing to light about the stuff that's been said about me. Yeah, the man that's standing on the wall screaming, I'm a grass, is a grass. His excuse is he did it when he was 17. I was 17. I truly am. Don't know who it was. You understand? The police told me he, it was him that shot at me. You can see the bullet. Now, here's the interesting thing about, about that shooting. Apparently I can't go to Granby Street. I'm on Granby Street. Granby Street is the front line, the front line of Liverpool Ace. I'm talking to Kenny the barber, yeah? And a car pulls up behind me. It's him and another boy called Leroy and they're in the car now. They've got the hoods pulled up and everything. Now, if they was armed at that time, I'm, I'm done. But I knew because they were sitting in the car and he went not getting off the car and there was only two of them that they weren't armed. Otherwise they'd have been off the car and shot me. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so I punched the window and they drove off. I got off, but I'd left me shaving stuff or stuff in the barbers. So I came back. When I'm coming up, yeah, Selborne Street, they're on the corner, on this side of the corner. And you'll see it on the TV program. Yeah, 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 yeah. The woman's house that got shot at is on that side of the road. Yeah, they're on that side of the road. I'm driving up the road that way in the 7 Series BMW. They see me, yeah? Now, instead of getting on the wall, I just got on the wall and just licking shot into my car and killing me. Yeah, yeah. The bullets, the, the, the trajectory of the bullets, yeah, they're all in the woman's ceiling. Do you know why? Because he was running away, firing over the shoulder. Yeah, I got no gun, I got no nothing. And I chased them. 
Yeah, and he talks about firing and shooting at me. They were running away. Now, here's the receipt for that. Look at the young gun, man. You'll see where the shots were fired from, and you'll see that they landed in the woman's upstairs window. Yeah, right, because they're dejected. Running away, firing over the shoulder. Instead of taking aim, I've got five shots to fire at me, not one touch me. Not one touch me, not because he was a bad shot, not because it, 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 I'm lucky, yeah, right? because he fired over his shoulder running away. He was terrified, yeah? These are the intricate details while I'm on the second round of what I'm doing that I'm bringing to light because they've tried to pour scorn on my name. They've tried to ridicule me, yeah? They've tried to say that I'm not real. They've tried to say that I'm a liar, yeah? And this second time around, I'm drug free. I have the receipts for the, the first time around, I was still doing pain, copious amounts of pain, yeah? Copious amounts of cannabis, Addling my own brain, understand? This time I'm crystal clear in what I want to do. Yeah, this time I feel I'm going to reach my objective. Yeah, only time will tell. Yeah, right, because the first time I got pretty close with the book, the documentary, we ended up in Cannes. We ended up in Cannes, Ted. Yeah, yeah, right? With a script and it was called the 49th Laws of Power. And the reason why it was called the 49th Laws of Power, you've got Graham Greene's The 48 Laws of Power. Yeah, yeah, and I've you've read got, that. you've got 50 Senses, The 50 Laws of Power. Right. Yeah, so I was doing the 49th the Laws of <laughs> right, right in the middle. Yeah, that's what the script was called. And Joe Kahanahan read the script. And he said, I've read the book. I know the guy. Yeah, change the name. Yeah, and he said, change the name. So Frenchy, urban legend. I've got that script too. I've got a script uh, 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 called Frenchy, urban legend. I'm working with a company called Darklight. You may know Jonathan McCry Gruber from the film, The Butterfly Effect. Yeah, it's a great movie. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, he's working with me. So, how did I come to have, to be partners with a Hollywood director? Let me take you back a little further. So we've had a, a Paradise Island, we've had the idea, we've wrote the book, we've done the documentary, I'm starting to get pressure, fired at and shot at. Yeah, yeah, right? It's hotting up for me. I'm seriously doing, anti uh, 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 I'm, I'm a serious anti-gun campaigner and I, I campaign against guns from 2005 to 2013. Yeah, seriously. Yeah. My, my anti-gun charity was called Kazuna Increase the Peace Program. The patrons of my charity were Evander Holyfield and Ricky the Hitman Hatton, yeah. I went to see, um, went to Las Vegas to see a fight, yeah. And this is when I realized the power of TV. When you go to Las Vegas, yeah, you've got an epoch of people from all over Britain in the one place, all five fans in the one place. And with my, my mates, yeah, you're right. And I couldn't walk 15, 20 yards without getting stopped and asked for the photograph. Yeah, you're right. And my mate said to me, you're famous. It was embarrassing for me. Yeah, yeah, it was slightly embarrassing for me. But then I realized, but then from outside of Liverpool, yeah, yeah, yeah I get a tremendous amount of love. Yeah. Inside of Liverpool, yeah, yeah, I get a lot of hatred. You understand? And I'm beginning to turn that around, yeah. Now, when I talk about my home city, they hate this. Yeah, they hate it because I have the facts on my city. You understand? Liverpool, 
the most racist city in Europe with the most racist police force. You can't say that, Stephen. I said that to a judge. The judge said to me, you can't say that, Mr. French. I said, I didn't say it. Lord Gifford said it in the Gifford Report, circa 1994, commissioned by Margaret Thatcher after the riots. Yeah. If you move from there, you can move to the uh, McPherson Report after the Stephen Lawrence issues and the malfeasance in the Met. If you want to move further from that again, you go to 2017 and the David Lammy Report. The British judicial system, the BAME community cannot touch, touch, uh, trust it. The BAME community, black, Asian, minority, ethnic, that's what they call us now, yeah? Now, I try to steer away from the issues of race, yeah, right? Because I'm not a racist, yeah, right? But I've got a nose for a racist. And because I can point out a racist, doesn't make me a racist. It just makes me switched on to what's to what's got what's happening. Yeah. So a lot of the a lot of the animosity and resentment that I get is from white people, white racists on Merseyside. Now, when you talk about racism, yeah, yeah, or unconscious bias, it only makes a racist uncomfortable. Or the people that are non-racist, because what if, let me let me just uh, 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 add add the flip side of that. There's a lot of non-racist white people in Liverpool. There's a lot of decent people in Liverpool. There's a lot of people in Liverpool that support me. I've had millions, lots and lots, not millions. I've had a lot, quite a few letters of mothers that have helped their their sons. Yeah, I was uh, on the phone yesterday with the family. Phone me up off messenger with the family of Sean Westy Westhall, the first kid that I ever mentored. He's actually in the, the Panorama program. Unfortunately, Sean took his own life. Yeah, yeah, he was a white kid, yeah. And it was brother Dom Dominic, and I've got, I've got to make this point. The white, the young white lads in Liverpool, yeah, 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 get treated exactly the same as the black lads. Yeah, 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 get treated exactly, get fitted up left, right and centre. I'm not saying that there's no crime, yeah, but, but the judicial system, yeah, yeah, is just geared to chew them up, yeah, and, and, and put them away. And these young men, Croxted, Paige Moss, Norris Green, they've been abandoned and forgotten, yeah. My mission statement back in 2005, to help the young men come out of the dark and into the light. And at the same time, expose the corrupt men in positions of authority and power, who utilize their authority and power to hold the rest of us down. Men like Richie Sunak, yeah, put in power, not voted. Yeah, bringing in this digital, central digital currency, yeah, forcing it on everybody when him and his family own the in infrastructure for it all. These politicians, what they're supposed to do, tell, yeah, yeah, right, is they're supposed to make an infrastructure that we can all tap into so we can provide for our families. Yeah, yeah. But what they do is they're just stuffing their own pockets. And while they're stuffing their own pockets, yeah, they're saying, Look at the boat full of brown people coming over here. <laughs> look, at them, look at them. Look at all the brown fellas coming in. And they stare up that nonsense. Right. Yeah. I mean, if, if you've, I've always looked at, uh, you know, racism and, and the way they use race and religion to divide people as, as being nonsense because I've got all sorts of friends from all sorts of walks of life. And I, I think in all walks of life, you've got cats, you've got good people, you know what I mean? You got bad people. One hundred percent. Listen, <laughs> listen. What? One hundred. See, see. But here, here, here's the difficult. Here's the difficulty about, about that. And I've used this stuff before, and I'll use it again. Yeah. One percent. Yeah, yeah. Own all the wealth. That one percent hired a four percent of politicians to control ninety percent of the people who are just too busy paying the bills and paying the mortgage. 
And there's five percent of us that know what they're up to. Yeah, yeah. And we receive the pressure because people don't know, want to know about this. Yeah, right. So in 2012, I've got Evander Holyfield over and I've got the heavyweight boxer uh, 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 champion, yeah, talking about martial arts and join martial arts, yeah, yeah, peace through participation in sport, yeah, yeah, have a fight, don't shoot each other, get in the ring, have a scrap, yeah, buy a pint after it. Uh, uh, um, the the look the uh, the mantra for it was fights, not funerals, yeah, I yeah, like yeah, 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 um, yeah. Um, Gloves, not 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 gangs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gloves, not guns. Yeah, a dojo class, which is where you do martial arts. A dojo class, not class A drugs. I had all the rhetoric. I was flying. They invited us on to um, Sky TV News. They says to me, "We want to interview Ivan the First, Stephen, if you don't mind." Yeah, and then we'll interview you second. So I thought, these are gonna stuff me, yeah, right? But it wasn't about me, yeah? So I said, okay, you can interview Evander first. And Evander Holyfield's interview still up. Here's the receipts, 18th of August, 2012. Evander Holyfield, type it in and you'll see it. And you'll see that it's connected with my name. In 2009, I'm also a born again Christian. In 2009, yeah, I went to the New Life Church. I spoke to a, a, a bishop called Bishop Heavy. In 2009, Bishop Heavy said to me, you'll speak to millions of people. You will speak to millions of people. And I thought, yeah, you're just trying to get your hand in my pocket. Yeah, I'll speak to millions of people. <laughs> yeah, That's what I thought right, right. With, with my- No, but when people say things like you, you wait, do think there's a wait, movie, don't wait, you? Wait, the 18th, the Sunday, I. I, th I think they done Evander on the on the Friday. They were doing me on a Saturday or the Sunday. Yeah, it was the Sunday. Yeah, the cars come to the hotel to pick me up. Tell, I'm in the car getting drove driven to the, the studio, and the driver says to me, "Do you know, Mr. French, that you're going to speak to 50 million people today on Sky News right across Europe?" And Bishop Ebby just flashed into my mind. Prophecy fulfilled, brother. You understand? Yeah, because I, I went and I spoke to 50 million people. This is what I told them, and they took the interview down. I told them British society, yeah, yeah, is like 20 biscuits on a plate. Yeah, the bankers and the politicians take 19 biscuits off the plate, and they share them with the elite. They leave one biscuit on the, pla on the plate, and they say to the British working class, look at the immigrants trying to steal your biscuit. They can't have it being broken down that simple. So that's being removed. But Evander's is still there. Yeah, and you'll see that he's linked with me. You understand? Later that afternoon, the same afternoon, I went on Radio Europe and I spoke to another 15 million people. So I've spoke to 100 million people in one day about it's love. It's a lot of people. You know. Love, like, well, in, in the, in, in the, in the, since 2005, since 2007, since I've started this work, with the books, the documentaries, the podcasts, the radio appearances, um, and the, the uh, 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 Danny Dyer thing being pay, played on a loop, I'm over a billion. I'm over a billion. Yeah, yeah. And You've only got six billion to go and then you uh, have the no, world. No, no, no. I've had an impact. Massive. Yeah. I've had an impact. No, it's been suppressed. Yeah, right? Because it's like, it's like, it's like, it's like trying to swim up a stream. Yeah. And this is why the power the powers that be, yeah, yeah, you're right. They have to ridicule me. They have to brand me a liar. They have to brand me not a guy to be listened to. Yeah, yeah, right. Because Pick the bones out of what I'm saying. Yeah. Tell me the stuff that I'm sharing. Yeah. Yeah. Examine it, pull it to pieces. Yeah. And then tell me it's not correct. Tell me the stuff that I'm, uh, that I'm trying to push forward isn't correct. Yeah. Right. Tell me that Richie Sunak isn't an unelected leader 
Yeah, yeah. Ripping the heart out of this country. Yeah. Tell me that that's not happening. Yeah. And I'm, I'm from a grassroots level trying to prom promote that. And then the worst thing is the people that I'm trying to help are the ones that are trying to pull me down. Because, and it's like, it's like uh, crabs in a bottle. You try to climb up that bottle and the other crabs will pull you down. Yeah, so with 2012, Mr. Stone, it's 2012 and I'm flying along. Yeah, and everything's just falling into place. Been to Cannes in 2011, got the script writ. writ. We're speaking to Lionsgate, speaking to Universal. But I, all, all the time, yeah, I'm constantly being threatened. Constantly on social media, yeah. Uh, um, my house was firebombed. Wow. Yeah. Um, um, all kind of stuff, all kind of stuff going on. Oh, quick, quick sidebar on my house getting fire, firebombed. Yeah. There's a guy called David Smith. Yeah. And I've been on a podcast and said his daughter was killed in a fire, yeah, right? And that's why my house got firebombed, yeah. There was a young man called Lawrence who was in that fire, jumped out of the window and snapped his ankle. He contacted me on social media, had a go at me, yeah, a proper, proper go at me, yeah. Yeah, but then his, his friend, Andrew O'Donnell, got hold of me. Shout out to Andrew O'Donnell, yeah, cause I wanna correct that mistake. Nobody died in the fire. I apologize for saying somebody died in the fire. Yeah, but that's what I was told back then. Yeah, yeah, right. I wasn't lying in the podcast. I was misinformed because I tell no lies. I'm on a round of podcasts. Yeah, yeah, right. And I'm bringing rigorous honesty. Yeah, brutal truth. I might get some things wrong to tell. Yeah, right. But I won't purposely. I won't purposely tell any lies. Yeah, yeah, right. Because I won't have to remember anything. Yeah, yeah, I'm bringing the truth back to back to 2012. 2012, yeah, yeah. And my friend, Jason, Jason Osu, gets murdered. Yeah, gets shot dead. The circumstances behind it have to remain private. It's still alive stuff. He gets shot. But Liverpool's getting red, 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 red hot. And I decide that I need to get out of Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, I've, had, I've had messages. We'll rape, we'll rape your wife, set your daughter on fire and shoot you. Voicemail, voicemail messages. Yeah, yeah, right. And You're really putting me off Liverpool. No, no, no. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. It's, it's, it's envy and jealousy. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. And, um, and, um, it's water off a duck's back to me, yeah, 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 right? But it's terrifying for my family. Of course. Yeah, right? Because a lot of people just do that. Yeah, ju ju it's, just, it's just noise. Yeah, it's just noise on the phone, yeah? And I wasn't, I wasn't upsetting anybody really serious, yeah, that wants, see, see eh, eh, eh. there was some taxation going on. It wasn't Jason, yeah, yeah. Who it was, we remained silent but he ended up in the wrong place at the wrong time. And he thought it was the guys that had been stealing the weed or stealing whatever it was. And he got, he got, he got murdered. Yeah, yeah, right. I, I, I decided it's time for me to, to vacate Liverpool. You know, you know, you mentioned about you was getting these messages and you were getting people saying stuff on social media. And then you obviously had the house firebombed. Was, was, uh, what, what was, what was, was there, any sort of context of why you were getting sent them, or was it just you were just getting sent them? Listen, listen, okay. Two of the most base human emotions are the most prevalent, envy and jealousy. Envy and jealousy has followed me everywhere. You understand? Yeah. And, and, and a lot of it, was based in, in 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 envy and jealousy. And I'll hang some meat on that, yeah, yeah, as we get to 213. Yeah, right? I'm at, I'm trying to be chronological, yeah, right. And and I'll I'll hang some meat onto onto why I know it was that, yeah, shortly. Yeah. 
I go, I go to, to, I'm, I'm in South London. Yeah. I'm in South London and I'm training in the gym with Julius Francis. Yeah, yeah, the guy that four ties. Right, Julius. Yeah, 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 right. yeah. I'm training in, and, and Danny, shout out to Danny. I think the gym was called Trojan. Yeah, yeah. Cause I'm training for the fight. Yeah, yeah. I'm, eh, eh, eh. I'm fighting as, I'm gonna fight as the fighting preacher. Yeah, I'm leading from the front. I'm gonna fight a kid called Rocky in a K1, a K1 knees and elbows match. Yeah, eh, eh. for the gloves, not guns. Yeah, 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 yeah. Showed them from, leading from the front. I'm 53 years of age and I'm getting in the ring. Yeah, they showed them, let's have a go. You understand? Yeah, yeah, uh, don't be scared. And we're doing it at the Troxy in East London. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, right. And we've sold 3,000 tickets. I'm, I, I'm, I'm top of the bill. Yeah, yeah, the posters that I was having, it, it's done. Yeah, right. But I've got bad knees, tell. I've got bad knees. Yeah, yeah, right. And the course is on injections down here at that time with 120 quid. And I could get them for 40 quid in, in Liverpool. So I was going to see my family and get the course of injections in Liverpool. Yeah, yeah. Back end of March. 13, yeah, 213. Yeah. I was also running a commercial debt recovery agency. Yeah, yeah. And I was involved in the, in the pensions. I had offices in Water Street, the money end of Liverpool, the executive floor. Yeah, yeah. They hated me being there. So you were taxing people, people legally then? <laughs> it was ex yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. It was exactly that. It was, right. a, listen, it was a legitimate taxation. Right. But what I did, yeah, right, I was very moral about it. Yeah, yeah, right. Because I needed the paperwork. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh, commercial debt recovery is all about paperwork. Because the first thing that people are going to do when they see me is phone the police. Yeah. You understand? The yeah, devil's yeah. here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I carry a copy he's got of the, an iron. I carry, I carry a copy of the book. Yeah, yeah. It worked, listen, listen, listen. It worked the treat. It worked the, it worked the treat. It, it did work a treat. You probably used to have to look at them and they were just like, I'll pay, I'll pay. <laughs> well, look, look. I got a manual check from, there was a, from David, no, from Rawlins. Uh, over the fourth bridge. They don't do manual, they said they don't do manual checks. I came away with a manual check for a hundred grand. The only one that they ever writ, you right. understand? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Be because, and then sidebar, one one company took me to court. Yeah, that because I was doing it. Yeah, yeah, right. And the judge, the judge said to them, he said to me, I know what you're doing, Mr. French. You're using psychological intimidation. He said, but unfortunately for the people that br have brought you to court, psychological intimidation, there's no charges for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If they think you're gonna do this, that, and the other to them, yeah, yeah, because I never ever made no threats. You understand? If I say to you, tell you owe me 40, 50 grand, if you don't give it to me, I'll break your legs, you can get me nicked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I put a copy of my book on the table and say, you need to pay the money that you owe, you need to have a read of that book. <laughs> Yeah, because you wouldn't like me when I'm angry. <laughs> no, no, because that's, you see, that's, that can also. Oh, well, you can't say that. Well, you, just read the book. Listen, 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 listen. There's a very thin line between demanding money with menaces, which is illegal, and enforcing a legitimate demand, which isn't. That's why I always had the paperwork. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And, eh, 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 I used to work at no recovery, no fee, 20%. If you wanted to jump the queue, yeah, yeah, you had to pay me 500 pound a day and you could jump the queue, yeah? And I'd wear coming up my ears, yeah, yeah, right? But we was also doing the pensions. We was getting involved in the pensions. I had a partner called Chris. We were getting involved in the, in the pensions. And there was a young whiz kid who knew all about the pensions, but he owed a guy 1,500 quid. I paid the guy 1,500 quid. So the guy could come and work for, so the other guy, the young lad could come and work for us. The guy I paid the 1500 quid misconstrued me giving him 1500 quid is that he was intimidating me. Yeah, because he was trying to move in on the business, on our business. Yeah, and I'm, I'm skating this line of legitimate businessman, an ex-gangster. Yeah, yeah, right, legitimate businessman, an ex-gangster, but I can still have a fight. Yeah, right, so I've got this fight going on in the Troxy. So I says to him, Come down to Troxy, I'll batter Rocky, get in the ring, and then I'll batter you as well. Yeah, right? Because I've got that type of confidence in myself. Yeah. He says, no, I'll end you. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our pain sisters, hairdressers down. Yeah, yeah. And also mention my daughter. Yeah. I've been shot at. I've been called a snitch. I've been all kind of shit had gone on. Yeah. And that popped me. Yeah. I idolized my daughter. She's had a life threatened twice because of me. She has nothing to do with me anymore. Yeah, right. She's got her own family now, her own daughter. Yeah. And she she said, that's the lifestyle you've li lived, Dad. And she she she's with estranged. It kills me. It kills me. But but I understand. Yeah. A bit like Freddie Foreman and his kids. Yeah. So anyway, I've had enough. So when I when I've had enough tell, murder becomes a good idea. Murder to solve a problem. So I decide. I'm gonna kill this guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna behead him. Yeah, and then surrender myself to the police, put his head on the counter and say, you've got me. Take me to prison. <laughs> That's a mess. No, take, take me to <laughs> cocaine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, look, listen, I've listen, just listen. Got, I just want to give you his head. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I was, listen, listen. I wasn't trying to get away with anything. Right. You understand? Yeah. I mean, that would, that would definitely, uh, I mean, that, that would have been, that would have been, I mean, that would have been a film in itself, wouldn't it? Listen, so <laughs> so I go to I go to um, Callan's on Bone Street, which is a military shop, yeah, and I buy the machete, yeah, right, because I got caught with a machete and and, and uh, a BB gun. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pellet gun. It wasn't right. a real gun. Right. It was a BB gun, but it looked real. And they're still heavy, aren't they? If you get the metal listen, ones, no, yeah. no. This is what happened, yeah. I've bought, the, I've bought the machete to do the job. And then I look in the counter, and it was a Seeger 900 or something. And um, if I want to get a real gun, I've got no problem in getting a real gun. It looks the business. You understand? It looks the business. And call it a, 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 a moment of madness or a moment of inspiration. But it sprung into my man just to pistol whip him like a bitch. Yeah? Um, and I pistol whipped that punk good. You understand? I pistol whipped him good. Bust his head open. Yeah, yeah, right. But then he's within the office. Yeah, he's run out the door, but I've seen the blood. My blood's up now. And I've run after him in, in Water Street in, the, in, in the, the offices that I was telling you about. When I get into the foyer, I realize I'm on camera with a gun in my hand. And this is the part that I'm ashamed of, tell. There's a young girl that had nothing to do with anything. Working there, yeah. Put a piece down by my side. And I walked over to her, but she knew I had it. Get me, I said to her, give me the video. And give me the video now. She went to Ashen, yeah. And she said, I would, Stephen, but it's, it's kept at a separate location. When she said that, I knew I was going to jail. You understand? I knew, I knew there and then I, she was going to jail. <sighs> Fast forward, I'm in jail and I write a letter. I write a letter, to, it gets published, yeah. You can look it up. The devil vows to do his time, yeah. And I wrote a letter of apology to him. Yeah, not to him. Yeah, he went, he, he went to hospital, I went to jail. Yeah, and, and my family was safe. He's probably uh, lucky, and he went yeah, to hospital. Yeah, 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 yeah protected. Yeah, you're right. But I did terrorize an innocent person. You understand? I did terrorize an innocent person, and I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of that, and I'm sorry for that. You're right. But I have retrieved the video on several occasions from several places to save myself from from stuff, and I would have retrieved the video there. Yeah, and I wouldn't have went to jail if it wasn't kept at a separate location. Yeah. But I'd come undone. I'd, 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 I'd come undone. Yeah. Now I'm in jail. Everything that I'm doing is falling down. But Graham Johnson comes to see me. Yeah. Graham Johnson comes to see me in jail and he says, there's an American company called Calamity Jane. Something, uh, 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 what's in it? Uh, Ellen Pompadour out of Grey's Anatomy. It's her company. Yeah, and she wants to do a limited TV series. Yeah, yeah, right. And they want to do us, a, 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 give us an executive producer role. Yeah, and they want to pay 
$10,000 for the option. Yeah, yeah. $10,000 a year for the option. Yeah, yeah, right. But no creative control. Yeah. So I say to him, no, I don't want to do it. Yeah, because I'm, I'm, I was like Rocky Balboa with Rocky. Oh. You understand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I had a vision. Yeah, and I knew I, I'd get be getting out of jail. Yeah, I got, I got, I got six years. Yeah, yeah, reduced to four. Yeah, 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 for the guilty, early guilty plea. So I had to do two. It's two thirty. So what was the actual charge that? Uh, 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 was it just uh, GBH section? No, no, no. A bladed article. Yeah, yeah, and and, and they charged me with a firearm charge. Right. Yeah, they actually charged me. Uh, uh, and they did it with a fake gun. They did it to me. They did it. They did it. To, they did. Listen to this. Here's how I know. It's, uh, I'm in jail. Yeah, yeah. And a kid with the same priest robs a bank. Yeah, yeah. And his mum dobbed him in. He come home and his mum dobbed him in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got, I got, I got a six. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, two off an early, early guilty plea, which we did to four. Yeah, four and, and, and I did two. Yeah, yeah. He got nine, eight, eight, 18 months. Yeah, right. They just threw the book at me. Yeah, yeah. They just, just, threw, they've been after me for a long time. Yeah, right. And, and I'm not. Good, but when, I, when I'm in jail, he comes and see me. I say, I say no. Yeah. Jonathan Mackay Gruber writes to me in prison. They've been taken around. Yeah. Um, um, somebody had taken up the option. I'm not going to give him the money. Thing, and Graham Johnson had gone behind my back and sold my rights. Yeah, yeah, w without my permission. Yeah. But you think when I get out, I'm going to get no. that machete? <laughs> no, 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 no. I dragged myself. I'm joking. I'm joking. No, no, yeah. no. I dragged myself out in jail. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. I dragged myself out in jail. Stopped taking cocaine. Yeah, and I used jail to drive myself out. Yeah, yeah. And my faculties returned to me. Yeah. And and and. I have, an, I have a great understanding of extreme violence. Yeah, yeah. And, and how useful it can be. Yeah. They say violence doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Well, it does. Yeah, yeah, right. But I'm, I'm trying to walk a different life. Yeah, yeah, right. So I've got out. Yeah, yeah, right. And I've, I've taken Graham Johnson to task. Yeah, 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 right. And I've got, I've got the money that he stuck down his pockets on me. Yeah, yeah, right. I made him. I made him pay it back to the uh, to to my media company. Yeah, and then the, these people want to work with me, uh, uh, Ellen DeGeneres, and we're going backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. They offer me nine thousand dollars an episode as an executive producer. Yeah, right. But I tell them they've got to bring the Groovers back on. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, uh, who who told me what was going on? They said, no, we don't want to work with them anymore. Whatever, whatever, whatever. So I said, well, if you don't want to work with them, I don't want to work with you. I turned it down. Fair enough. Yeah, I I I, I, I turned it down. Yeah, right. Uh, uh, um, and and then my name went cold. I'd lost the heat. Yeah, I became the anti-gun campaigner that pistol whipped somebody. Nobody wanted to touch me. Yeah, I became toxic and a bad smell. Yeah, but I started to do, I, I couldn't be an anti-gun campaigner anymore, but I was still peace campaigning. Yeah, and I got it, I got it, uh, but I got, I've seen two girls at once. I was living with one girl and I've seen another girl. Yeah, and I got one and I got the girl outside pregnant. Yeah, this is 2.15 now. I've done me two years, I've come out of jail, but we're 2.15. And she, she's, I've done, I've done, uh, I've come out of jail and I've got this girl pregnant, but an abortion scheduled. Yeah, you're yeah, right, an abortion scheduled for the baby. Yeah, and because I'm living with you the girl. I've told her about everything, and everything's explained. I've told her the abortion's going ahead. Yeah, and then my daughter takes me for my birthday meal in Manchester, 215, and tells me she's pregnant. Yeah, you're yeah, right. And that she's having a baby, she's not getting married, she's having a baby. Uh, 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 that's that, that, because she's very headstrong like me. She was in the second year of the university. After the initial shock, 
I became delighted that I was going to have my first grandchild. Then the big, bad, wicked devil, Frenchman, had a crisis of conscience. On the one hand, I'm celebrating the birth of a grandchild. And on the other hand, I'm organizing an abortion. I couldn't do it. So I phoned the girl up, said, don't have the abortion. When the baby's born, we'll do a DNA test. If the baby's mine, yeah, yeah the, baby's, the baby's okay. But I didn't tell the girl that I was living with because there was a good chance the baby wasn't going to be mine. And my thinking tell at that time was no harm, no foul. That's, that's, that's uh, October-ish, October-ish 2.15. January 2.16, somebody phones her up, phones the girl I'm living with up, and tells her, you're a soft cow. Yeah, she hasn't got rid of the baby. He's lied to you. She's still having the baby, and the baby's his. his, his the baby's his. Okay. You need people like that in your life, don't you? She, 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 she tries to discuss it with me. Yeah, yeah. But I'm, I'm what you call an old West Indian with the paper. <laughs> <laughs> Not listening. Not going to argue with the bird. Yeah, yeah. Just psh, Star Wars. Not even reading the paper, just hiding from it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, but she, she's going, go, going on, going on, going on. She spits at me. She spits at me. I spat back at her. She runs, she jumps down the stairs. She says, that's it, because I'm, I'm on license now, Tell Do you know what license yeah. is? I'm on probation license, yeah, from the pistol whipping. Yeah, yeah. She goes, I'm getting you recalled, I'm getting you recalled. Yeah, yeah. She picks up the phone, she's on the phone, and she starts wailing into the phone, he's killing me, he's killing me, ah! Uh, her 18-year-old son's over from Dubai, Dubai visiting us. I say to him, if you don't stop your mum doing what she's doing, I'll take it up with you and all the men in your family. That was a threat that I made. Yeah. Anyway, I go and hide, the police come, I go and hide on the roof. Yeah, yeah. The police take care of the way. Yeah. They're not interested. She's got no marks. She's got no it's on it. She's not into She So she comes out to the police station. She phones me up. And she says to me, I'm sorry about that, Stephen. I was drunk. Eh, eh, I won't do that again. I, I'll be on my nose. I said, nah, love, we're done. I'm moving out. Yeah, you phoned your bill on me. Yeah, right. Now, on Yami B's podcast, I said to it that I said, you George Floyd did me. Now, you've got to remember, when I was on Yami B's podcast, I'm doing it in 23, referring to an incident that happened in 216, and I used a 2020 reference, and I've been pulled on that, that I was telling lies. Yeah, you're right. right. Because I said I got George Floyded. You're right. But I couldn't have said to her I got George Floyded. You're right. Because it hadn't happened by then. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm talking about it in 2023. Yeah, right. Because I've, I've been George Floyded before George Floyd. Do you understand? Twice. Who's the original. Yeah. yeah. No, no, it's happened to lots of us. It's right. to, and not just black guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Four coppers will jump you. One of them will choke you. Yeah. And they'll choke you out. Yeah. I've been, cho I've only ever been put unconscious twice. Once by four police and once by a tornado squad. A tornado squad. They come in like beetles. Is that in the in the jail? Yeah, 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 yeah. They have full riot gear on. Yeah, yeah. And they just jump you. Yeah. <laughs> it's good fun. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, LP, LP 23. Yeah, yeah. I'll never forget him because they used him right in the LP 23 in his helmet and he flew out the door. Yeah, right. And then he just murdered me. So, so anyway. She's come out of the police station. She said that, yeah, right? I said, she goes back in. Now, she was questioned first time as a vulnerable person. Yeah, yeah, right? The question is a vulnerable person. And one of the questions they ask a vulnerable person, she was asked, has Mr. French ever sexually assaulted you? She replied, no, not, there's none of that going on. Yeah. 17 hours later, she had that seed planted in her head. She went back in. I said, he raped me. He raped me two weeks before Christmas. I was arrested, 2.15, yeah, January 2.15, sorry, that January 2.16, yeah, yeah, and I wasn't charged till April, and they charged me with, uh, they tried to charge me with coercive behavior, yeah, coercive because she said, I never give her no money, she lost four st stone and weight, and I ripped her twice before Christmas, yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, no, uh, uh, two weeks before Christmas. Yeah. 
She'd been my mistress for 10 years. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, and I've got to be very careful what I say about this because she's got anonymity for life. If I say anything that can identify her, yeah, 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 I'll get Nick. But I know how to talk about this without identi and without actually identifying her and the stuff that's already out in in, in the wide for in the wide forum. Because she had me she had me on a restraining order. They gave her a restraining order. Yeah, right. And I was painted a beast. Yeah. Now before I'd ever stepped foot in a court hell. Yeah, yeah, right. In the Daily Mirror. Uh, and. The Daily Mirror, the Daily Mirror, it, it was owned by Trinity, Trinity Group, yeah? yeah, and they also owned the Echo, yeah, right. Front, front page banner headlines: Stephen French, two counts of, yeah, I'm in jail now, yeah, right. Now, if you were accused of raping a beard once, there can be some grounds for. Well, maybe there was consent, maybe there wasn't. But if you're getting accused of doing it twice, yeah, 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 everybody believes you're guilty. Right. But it wasn't charged with two. It was an on-purpose mistake in the paper. Yeah, yeah, because they were trying to get me killed in jail. Wow. Yeah, right? Now, what you've got to remember, yeah, is, is when you go in a British prison, if you are charged with a sex offence, it doesn't matter if you're innocent or guilty. The environment says you're getting it. You understand? You're getting it. They, they wanted me to go on protection on the numbers. Yeah, yeah. With the real nonsers and the real child molesters. I told them, kiss my granny's cunt. Yeah, I'm going in general population. Yeah, yeah, right. And whatever's going to happen is going to happen in general population. Yeah, because I was innocent. You understand? When does when the policewoman DC four eight four nine Lucy Neal, a most pernicious police officer, a most wicked, corrupt individual, was questioning me in my under caution interview. This is all recorded. These are my receipts. I told her you'll get no promotion off of me. You'll get no conviction for this and I know you're going to charge me and I know you're going to put me in the paper yeah and I know you're going to move me from jail to jail and I predicted everything they were going to do to me yeah right now it could sound like a uh, 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 what's it called when you look backwards retrospectively oh, yeah. yeah yeah it's on a tape recording of the day the 20th of January 2016 when you get recorded under arrest. Did you actually keep get a copy of that? Listen, I've got a copy of those tapes. Love it. Yeah, yeah. They've got a copy of, of, of those tapes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, right. And the transcript will be going in the new book. You understand? Yeah, yeah, right. When I talk about receipts. Yeah, you can yeah, prove yeah. it. Time and date stamped receipts. Yeah, yeah. That I can prove that. And what I'm saying in in. 2020, 14th of March, 2024, is what happened on the 20, 20th of January, 2016. Yeah, incontestably police evidence. You understand? And it's so beautiful, Tell. When you've been branded a liar and you can do these things. Yeah, absolutely. You understand? Yeah, right? Because it just dumbfounds people. There's nothing that they can say. Do you think that because the police had it in for you because if obviously like you said that, that, that pistol whipping thing um, and you was on license, do you think the fact that she made those allegations, they were like fantastic and they just used it because it was another way of getting you? Uh, 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 okay. I'll answer. I'll let, I'll let, I'll let John Brown, senior partner of Hogan Brown solicitors, Temple Court, Liverpool, answer that question. This is the most underhanded police and CPS investigation I've ever seen in 30 years of being, or 20 years at that time, of being a lawyer, yeah, yeah, right, and you should never have even been charged. Wow. Yeah. The, the malfeasance 
that took part, that took place in order to bring those charges against me, yeah, yeah, was unbelievable. Yeah, the malfeasance. Now, uh, uh, DC 4849 Lucy Neal, yeah, yeah, couldn't have operated the way she operated without the Riddle Command Team, because it was on Riddle Police Station, yeah, the Riddle Command Team uh, 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 allowing her to do so, yeah. And finally, finally, yeah, they had a witness that was prepared to go forward against me because there's one about four or five cases already, you understand, where they, where they, they, they thought they'd had, had, had me, yeah, right? And I, I, I got out of it. I got out of it. I was once charged with threatening to kill three police officers. Yeah, yeah. That was in the that, that was in, in, in the paper. Yeah, yeah. But I had a secreted recording device on me that saved me. Yeah, um, you know the pen with the camera in it. Yeah, right. right, right. So I could, pl I could play that. PC Marcus Coast, Sergeant Rohan, and PC Jones. Yeah, yeah. Stop me in Operation Town Safe. Yeah, he said that I beat him up so bad he was off work for three weeks. Yeah, happened on a Friday, tell. Happened on a Friday, I got stopped. Yeah. He's in the dock. He's telling the judge the story what happened on Friday. Yeah. Then I produce my paperwork. When he sees it, I think they, they call the Flair de Relais, the French feathers. Yeah, the, the yeah, three yeah. feathers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They're the logo of New Brighton Rugby Club. Played rugby on a Saturday. Had the match report. <laughs> <laughs> we made him read it from the dock. Wow, well, but that, that that was a bit awkward for him. <laughs> he nearly fainted. <laughs> <laughs> he went to Colour of Boils. L listen to the story. The story. Yeah, right, right. So he's been telling the judge. Yeah, yeah. That he, he, he's done all these things. Uh, I've done all these things to him. I prepared my own brief, yeah, yeah, but I had a barrister to speak for me. I'm sitting at the back, yeah, yeah. When he sees the logo on the paper coming to him, he knows what it is and he starts to wobble. He starts to wobble, yeah. His name's Marcus Coast. We, we highlighted what we wanted him to read. The powerful Marcus Coast ran down the wing and scored a try. Yeah, the judge goes to him. Aren't you Marcus Coast? No, Your Honor. Denied his own name. <laughs> Denied. He was that. He was that. Got, got, yeah, yeah. I burst out laughing at the back of the court. Yeah. The judge says to me, "What's funny, Mister French?" I said, "Him. He's going to call it a boil shite." Yeah, yeah. We don't need that language in this court. I said, "I know we don't need that language in this court, but you need to stop this trial right now after he's just read that and what he's told you." Yeah, because he's tantamount to perjuring himself. He never done them for page. He always let them go, but it didn't get a not guilty. Yeah, the trial got stopped. Yeah, key the joke, key the joke. So they selected the jury. Yeah, yeah, right. So there's a chance. So I, I can pick who I want on the jury. So I see this Chinese fella looking at me, and I know he don't like me. Yeah, right. But he got on the jury anyway. Yeah, yeah, he got on the jury. When the when when, when the case is finished. Yeah, yeah, right. The judge goes. We're stopping the trial of cases. He said, he guilty, he guilty. <laughs> <laughs> guilty, guilty. <laughs> he just wanted to get me nicked there. Wow. Yeah. But uh, listen. Uh, uh, you didn't uh, have any problems with any Chinese people in? <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. Uh, uh, um, I've got a lot of Chinese friends. But right. th listen, that happened. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm just, I'm just. I mean, it's crazy. I mean, to anybody watching this or listening to this, that would just be mad. They'd just be like, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, it, it, listen, it was funny. Yeah, right. yeah, it was, it was, it was funny. And, and for those, type in, type in to your Google, Stephen Friend says he was roughed, roughed up off the police. And you will get the story to that. Yeah, right? You will get, because all my stuff it ends up in the papers. Yeah, yeah, right. This is what I did. Yeah. At that time, I said, there's a few bad apples that spoil it for the rest. Maybe I please have a very difficult job to do. Yeah, I wouldn't like to do it, 
but there's a few bad apples that spoil it for the rest. Yeah, yeah, right. I hold no grudges. And <laughs> the problem they have with me, yeah, yeah, right, is they can't say I'm lying about that because it's in the paper. <laughs> time and date stamped. <laughs> and I love time and date stamped stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've just give the viewers, they can go and they'll see it and they'll go, yeah, he did say that. Right. Yeah, that, that did happen. You understand? Yeah, right. Because everything that I do, I've done since 2007 has always made the papers. Right. Um, I, I had a huge uh, social media following. Yeah, yeah. The Echo used to raid my Facebook pages for copy. Wow. Yeah, yeah, for, for, uh, uh, copy. Uh, Jürgen Klopp, 2015. His first home match, yeah, yeah. I wrote a story. You know what a sweat box is? No. The sweat box is what they take you to jail in. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, 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 the Yeah, yeah. Right. You call it the sweat box. Yeah. Sweat box, it's a director's box. Yeah. Sat in the number one chair in Anfield next to the football players. Yeah, yeah. Photographed from Sky, T Sky TV News. Went all over Europe. The devil sitting next to the, next to Ben Teki and Sacho. But Seki and Sacco and uh, Khan, Khan's in front of me at, at, at that time. Yeah, yeah. That went, that, that went viral, yeah, right? Because the Echo tried to make some story about, about uh, I'm going to get the Liverpool players shot. Are you a big, are you a big Liverpool fan? Huge. Right, okay. Because in Liverpool, I know there's, there's like in, Man, in Manchester, you have Man City and, and Man United. Yeah. And in Liverpool, it's Everton and, and Liverpool, yeah. and, and you fucking hate each other, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. What you've got to understand about Liverpool, Liverpool's mini island. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mini, it's mini island. Yeah, yeah. And you've got to see, Toxteth is the South End. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was that where you was? Yeah, yeah, right. South End. Yeah, it's called the South End. No Irish, no blacks, no dogs. Yeah. And the North End, Scotty Road, still a black and all them. Yeah, yeah. Or oh, pro uh, presidents. Yeah, I so love you've got Stella Black. She was from, yeah, from yeah. she was an Everton fan. Was she? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if she was an Everton fan. Yeah, right. right. And there's this, this, this crossover. Yeah, right. But and the Evertonians, it's a lot of the Evertonians that hate me. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, the West Ham fans last week were singing about me in Goodison to the Everton fans. <laughs> Seriously. I Seriously. What was the I song? Don't, I don't even know. Somebody just told me I don't even, I've been trying to look for the song yet, yeah, oh. right? But I'll tell you what Everton's song was. Yeah, until he got Kevin. Hello, hello, Everton no white, Everton no white, hello. Because most of the races are in that end of the city. Right. Yeah, south end of the city is cosmopolitan. Yeah, yeah, right. North end of the city. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Mm -hmm. I, north end of the city, Evertonians don't like black people. Traditionally, yeah, yeah, right, right. Until he got Kevin Campbell, then he couldn't sing that song anymore. But t t uh, Tony Billy's a massive Everton fan, isn't he? And obviously, he, listen, is he turned? Uh, has he turned listen, around a bit? Do you think? Listen, or not? listen. I know Tony Bellew's father. Yeah, yeah, a legendary street fighter. His, his dad's called Tony. Don't, he was on the doors at the same time as, as I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when we were kids, Tony, Tony's mum is called Gail, and she's the same colour as me. You understand? Yeah, a lot of people don't know that Tony's got black in him. You understand? Yeah, right. But there's always exceptions to every rule, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, there's always exceptions. Because cause, hey, 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 I know a lot of real, I know a lot of, my, my brother-in-law, Gordon, yeah, 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 right? Uh, uh, who's mixed race like me. He was a mad Evertonian. Yeah, yeah, right? So there's exceptions to the rule. Yeah, right? Because uh, um, the love of football in Liverpool actually trans transcends race and everything, race and religion, yeah, right? Because football is the religion in Liverpool, yeah, yeah, right? And Liverpool is God's team. Everybody knows that. And, and Robbie Fowler was God at one time. That was Robbie Fowler's nickname, yeah? And he was a tox to flood, Robbie Fowler. Yeah, so yeah. We, 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 we up to, we're up to, so yeah, so the, I'm, I'm, I'm up to where, where, I mean, I'm, I've been sent to prison for Yeah, and they're trying to stitch me up. I wrote an unofficial white paper, 30,000 words. Institutional racism and malfeasance in public office on Merseyside. I took Merseyside police to the Royal Court of Justice. 
Mays in Cheshire, CPS to the Royal Court of Justice. Liverpool Children's Services to the Royal Court of Justice. The Probation Services to the Royal Court of Justice and the prison services to the Royal Courts of Justice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some cases got kicked out, some are won, but I totally destroyed everything. Yeah, I, st I had the case kicked out before trial. Yeah, right? I had a, bar a barrister called Dominic Thomas. I'll never forget Dominic Thomas. He, he had one eye, he had one eye, eye on his patch, a patch on one eye. Yeah. Now, Dominic was preparing for trial. I knew that if I went to trial in Liverpool, and here's a little bit of history for you. Yeah, right. Tony Blair was a barrister. Tony Blair changed the rules in the British criminal justice system to who could sit on the jury. Tony Blair changed the rules so that probation officers, police officers, prison officers could also sit on your jury. Yeah. Now, here's a, here's a stat that I've said before. In the 30 years since Tony Blair did that, crime on Merseyside, crime in general, yeah, has halved. But the prison population has doubled. That's an anomaly. That's a, a, a how has that happened? Yeah, right, right. More people are getting found guilty. Yeah, yeah, right. Now in Liverpool, Liverpool's a closed shop. Yeah, a close, a closed shop of Freemasons, yeah, yeah. Funny handshake brigade, I call them, the faceless men, yeah. And I knew if I knew I'd have at least two Freemasons on my jury and I had no chance of getting a fair trial. I knew I had to stop it before trial. Yeah, right, yeah, right. Because they wouldn't let me move it out of Liverpool, even though I was, I was in the papers. I, I had seven front pages before I went to court. Yeah, that was to pollute my jury pool, yeah, yeah. Everybody on Mersey's side, I was on, I was on the radio, I was on the TV, I was in the mirror, I was in the echo, four to five, six times, yeah, right, right, and I was, and I was innocent, yeah, right, right, and nobody believed me, yeah, right, but I had the steadfastness, yeah, yeah, right, right, to battle, yeah. There's a lad called Eddie Atta, yeah, Eddie Atta phones the jail, and he speaks to Spencer Benjamin. Spencer Benjamin, side boss, Spencer Benjamin is the brother of Clay Benjamin. Clay Benjamin took over the South End after me. Yeah, yeah, right, right. And Clay Benjamin was the kid that was murdered. Yeah, that Kwame, that I told you when he was 17, pointed out the kid that murdered him. Yeah. The guy, I won't call his name, he was a he was a he was a quitter for the, from, from the murder. Yeah, yeah, right. But these people did snitch off him, yeah, instead of sorting out. Spenner, Spenner, Spenner Benjamin got told that they were going to chain, turn me into the next Jimmy Savile. Maisie's Side Police was, was very busy finding my ex-girlfriends, yeah, yeah, to see if any of them had, had them, yeah, because they were going to turn me, and this, this was the phrase that was used, they was going to turn me into the next Jimmy Savile. I phoned my solicitors up, yeah, from Hogan and Browns, and I said, there's a phone call, call, call coming. The police are trying to speak to my ex-girlfriends, yeah, because they're going to take me to the next Jimmy Savile. I go into my cell, Mr. Stone, and I start to have flashbacks of when I was a child. Yeah, flashbacks to Wilton Vale, Children's Assessment Centre, Menlove, Menlove, Wilton Vale, Menlove Avenue, Children's Assessment Centre. I was there, 1965, from the 12th of December to the 23rd of December. And I could, I could only remember vague bits of it, but then everything started coming back to me. Yeah, because the memories had been what they call, and I, I only found out this later in therapy. Yeah, 
But I'm telling you what happened. I didn't know this was happening when I was in prison. Yeah, you're right. This is this is retrospectively after they've done me therapy. This is what it was called flashbacks I was having. Yeah, yeah. So I'm having a flashback. And I'm, I'm flashing back to old cigar, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giving out toys to kids. Yeah. And he gives me a red fire engine with a yellow ladder on it and a bell. And I started to hear that bell ding again. Yeah, yeah, right? Because he tried to touch me, tell. The actual real Jimmy Cell. Listen to what oh. I'm telling you. He tried to touch me and I smashed him in the face with the fire engine. Yeah. Now, when I smashed him in the face with the fire engine, I've cut him over his eye. He's the first man that I made bleed. I'm in this home. It's 1965. The people come into me. I'm a federal kid. Yeah, we were federal. Yeah, right. They, they, they come into me. Yeah, I'm in care. They come into me and they've said, um, what have you done that for? Said, my mum says, anybody tries to touch it underneath, you've got to whack them. Now, that's what it was called back in the day, yeah, you're, you're underneath. Said, my mum said, if anybody tries to touch it underneath, you whack them. You tried to touch me underneath and I whacked them. Yeah. They beat me like a runaway slave. Yeah. Then they sent me to Wales, yeah, to this uh, she was she was a woman, he was a disabled guy. And they used to try me over the well, a Welsh dresser and whip me with curtain wire. And they whipped me to silence. And they whipped me to, to, to such a degree that those, I forgot those memories. You understand? Those memories became regressed. Yeah. The memories were triggered back when they said they were going to turn me into Jimmy Savile when I was in jail. Yeah, when I've gone to therapy, yeah, yeah, I've eventually been diagnosed complex post-traumatic stress disorder. Complex post-traumatic stress disorder. The trauma that I was going through of being charged with rape and getting attacked in prison and, and them trying to destroy me, yeah, triggered the tri childhood trauma yeah, and that's what makes it complex. Yeah. Huh. He's a lying bastard, I was told. He never did that to Jimmy Savile. That's a load of tosh. I wrote the 33 page document. I sent it to the Home Secretary. I sent it to the Ministry of Justice and I sent it to the Prime Minister. And I've got a, I've got a, a letter, I've got a reply from the uh, Prime Minister. As a result of that, Mr. Stone, DC Lee Stinchcomb of Merseyside Historical Abuse Unit was given the job to investigate. He went and got my child files. When that man got my child files, he said to me, and I've got it in an email. He said to me, 1960s, I've read your file. I'm very, very, oh, it's such harrowing reading. Such harrowing, I, I, I can't believe it. Anyway, to come to your complaint, yeah, yeah, we found that Jimmy Savile was there when you was there. He was there from 1960 to 1965. Yeah, yeah, and there's a 12-day period where he could have come into contact with you. Yeah, yeah, right. Now, that's what the police have found out. Yeah, yeah, right. In the files, it says, Mr. F I was moved on the 23rd of December from the home. Now, you've got to remember that's two days before Christmas. And it just says, move for an incident. I know what the incident was. Yeah, right. Oh, so now, now he's saying all the people in there are lying. Now he's saying all the people there are lying in, in Wilton Vale Child Assessment Centre. Yeah, yeah. We then look at Wilton Vale Child Assessment Centre. Closed down. 1979. As part of Operation Care. Merseyside's uh, police's investigation into care homes 
physically and sexually abusing young boys and girls. 12 convictions, they went to prison. These are my receipts. Cause I was telling them that was happening 15 years earlier. Yeah, but nobody believed me. 15 years later, it all come out in the wash. Yeah, right. Don't believe me? Type in Menlove Avenue, Wharton Vale, Child Assessment Centre, Operation Care. Receipts tell. Receipts to back up what I'm saying. I made Jimmy Savile bleed. I just want to shake your hand. Listen, if they would have believed me, imagine how many children would have been saved. Exactly. I mean, that's one thing I don't get, like when people well, 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 raise well, this awareness. Just let, me, just let me lend, just let me lend, just let me land this now. I wrote a poem, yeah, and I had two titles for it. One title was A Six-Year-Old Boy, which relates to that story. And the other title was Monsters Are Made, Not Born. That's where the devil was born, in the home. Yeah, cause nobody got anywhere near my, I used to sleep with a screwdriver, you understand? Yeah. I mean, after you've, after that's fucking happened to you, you've been Jimmy Savile, you, you fucking just think, I mean, I take it there was all at it, what I did. Listen, 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 12 of them went to prison. 12, listen, it was a, it was a Victorian hellhole. Yeah, you're right. Just, just try to suppress all this stuff. Yeah, you're right. Here's what, here's, here's, here's the stuff for you. Yeah, yeah. I call it West America. America and Britain, yeah. In America and Britain, yeah, yeah. Half a million kids a year go missing. Where the fuck are they? What's happening to them? Where are they going? Yeah. Um, DCI, Clive Driscoll. He was on, he was on. He wrote a book called The Pursuit of Truth. I read his book. I read his book in jail. I also read Howard Gale's book in jail, 81 Minutes in Munich. These books found a way to me, yeah, yeah, right? He talks in his book about satanic ritual abuse. Yeah, 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 right? About men with antlers on and big long gowns on. I seen them guys walking up and down the hallway in them homes. You understand? And the kids that they used to take, see, I still had my mum, you get me? They took the proper orphans, yeah. DCI Clive Driscoll was doing an investigation in, in, in Elephants and Castle. Yeah. He was closed down by Jack Straw. Yeah, yeah. Because he ran into Leon Britton. Uh, uh, Leon, I love boys, Britain. You understand? The one that Margaret Thatcher protected. Yeah. Then we have Ted Heath and Morning Cloud. Yeah. And, and, and Jimmy Savile supplying him with boys that go missing. You understand? Yeah, right. Now, um, when I, when I let my story out about Jim, Jimmy Savile, I was ridiculed. I was laughed at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Frenchie got bummed off Jimmy Savile. No, no, I made the man bleed. That's the first man that I've caught, I've caught plenty of men. Yeah, he, I'm six years old and I'm, I've, I've made a man bleed, a, a man bleed. Yeah, I've been fighting men. See, since, I think people would have actually referred to you as the saint for doing that. Yeah, no, no, you see, see. Because he's a fucking bad person. Listen, 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 listen but, but no, no, you've got to remember, yeah, right, that comes out now. I, uh, there's a guy called Sam Walker, yeah, right, and he attacked me, he attacked me, yeah, yeah, online, and he said, if this happened to him, why didn't he write about it in his book in 2007? Yeah, yeah, he, he's lying through, through his teeth. Well, from 2017 to 2023, I was in therapy. Yeah, and when I was in therapy and I relayed all this stuff to my, my, my clinicians, yeah, yeah, and I told them the story about in, two, in, two, in 2016, I got the phone call, they turned me to Jimmy Savile, Jimmy Savile, that was the trigger that brought, the memories were regressed. I got beat so bad, tell. Yeah, yeah. I got beat so bad that I regressed the memories. The memories were still there, but it was so painful to tap into. The brain locks them off. Yeah, the brain locks them off. Now, now, um, um, 
this is all documented psychiatric stuff. Yeah, right, right. Because um, um, although, although I'm articulating intelligence, I'm not wired up right. You get me? The circuit boards lights up, but the wires are a bit, you know? Yeah, right, right. Yeah, and this is where the extreme violence comes from. Then, so, so in the 80s, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was this rage. I was a young man raging. Rage, mad rage. Yeah, 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 right. It's the, it's the regressed memories fueling that rage. Yeah. I learned two coping mechanisms. I learned two coping mechanisms because they branded me a dirty lying black bastard in the homes and sent me off to get whipped in Wales. Yeah. A time and date stamp everything. I independently prove everything from my word because I internalized that stuff as a child. Now, I only went to therapy, yeah, to jump through the hoops to, to, to be uh, accepted, to ch challenge my criminal behavior, yeah, in order to get custody of that kid I've told you about, the baby that was born. I want to get custody of it, yeah, but I had, to, I had to go through certain hoops. And one of them was challenging my offending behavior. And one of them was to be to get therapy. So I went to therapy thinking therapy is for, for fools and it doesn't work. Best thing I ever did, man. Because I've got two clinicians that, that helped me decode myself. Yeah. And I've re, I got, then I, I, I got, it's called, and, and take a note of this. Yeah. It's called a subject access request, better known as a SARS. You get it under the Freedom of Information Act 2000. And you can make an application for your own child files. I got my own child files. I went into that home and, I, and my nickname was Smiler. I didn't even remember, I'm reading these files because if you looked at me, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd smile. I never left there smiling. Yeah, from 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 six to eleven, from six to eleven, I was in and out of care. Yeah, yeah, and I'm writing about this in the book. Yeah, right. And this is why I won't let the book out until my mum dies. Yeah, right, right. Because my mum loved her children. My mum did the best job, she, but she's a woman on her own with five kids, all different colours. Yeah, yeah, right. In in 1960s Britain. Yeah, no wonder she had nervous breakdowns. No wonder what happened happened. Yeah, you're right. I don't know nothing against my mum. I idolize my mother. Yeah, so out of respect, I won't release the devil recorded. Yeah, right, because they made me into a monster. Yeah, right. I began, and those that were dead in the 80s, yeah, yeah, right. I got sent a video, I got sent a video the night of my mates, Abdul. Abdul from 1983, a program about the color bars in Liverpool and black people not going, not being allowed to go into the clubs. I smashed that. I can't come in here. What? Wrecked the place. Then ended up doing the security in the gaff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, no. But this is all documented. Yeah. yeah. If you if you look at the Danny Dyer program, you see that I was the Grafton's in the north end of the city. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Blacks weren't allowed up the south end. I invaded the North End wow. like a Viking and set up camp. My. Yeah, this was my crew. Andy Palmer, ABA boxing, heavyweight boxing champion. Andrew John, British karate champion. Yeah, Jimmy Price, Commonwealth gold medalist. Yeah, Brian Schumacher, captain of the 1984 Olympic boxing team. Four Tony Wilson for the British title, yeah. Sidebar, Brian taught me how to left hook. I got stabbed, I thought it was me weakest hand. Brian taught me how to left hook because I used to box at um, the United Services Golden Gloves owned by John Smith Sr., a man I respect. Yeah. Uh, um, taking my hat off to the Smiths. Yeah, yeah. Under the white family. That's because uh, the, the Liam and... Uh, no, not yeah. them Smiths. Oh, not them ones. It, it, it's, listen, right. listen. There's John Smith Sr. There's John Smith Jr. There's Colin. Colin, Colin was murdered. 
Yeah, wow. shot outside speak yeah, with, with, with a shotgun. Colin was Curtis Warren's partner. Allegedly, a massive cocaine deer. I say allegedly, yeah. And then there's Kevin, who who used to take take the boxing training. Yeah, they opened the Pivy um, Snooker Club in Lodge Lane. Yeah, and they were one of the first non-racist white families that I knew. You understand? Yeah, and used to give us all work. The dad used to give us all work. You understand? Yeah, right. So I've got a lot of time for the Smiths. You understand? Um, um, what happened to Colin was outrageous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, laying people on millions of pounds worth of cocaine. Yeah, and then they got him killed for, for maybe 200 grand so they didn't have to pay the bill. Yeah, allegedly. This is the, 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 uh, the rumors of, of, the, of the underworld. Yeah, got his head blew off out, outside the, the sports center. Yeah. And these, these are all people from my past. Or these are all people that I know, you understand? Uh, so the creation of the devil yeah, 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 started as a six-year-old boy. Yeah, right? And I, I, I give the analogy of this. Yeah, yeah, right? I love dogs. Yeah. So you get two pups. You get two pups. And you can, you can mistreat a pup. Not that I do. Yeah, yeah. You can mistreat a, mistreat a pup, and this pup ends up every time you go near it, its leg goes up and it wheezes, just peace because it's always terrified. Then you can get the other one that just keeps trying to bite you and bite you and bite you, and that becomes a junkyard dog through the brutal treatment that it gets. And that's what happened to me. Yeah, I went in there, the kid called Smiler. Yeah, I came out of there with the seeds of the devil planted in me. Yeah, yeah, raging against everything and not knowing why I was raging. Yeah, took me to later in life. And this is why the stuff about Jimmy Savile isn't in the book, because it was regressed. It was regressed, he died in 2011. It, 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 even when it didn't come, didn't come back. When I got told I was getting turned into him, yeah, yeah, I'm in the cell and I had flashbacks. Yeah, right now, I didn't know what they was doing. They didn't all, all, all come back to me. And that's when I started writing, writing, writing. And then when I come out, I needed to prove that. And it was there. It was there. It was there. It was there. So, yeah. And and I mean, when you when you uh obviously went through that tra trauma and you and 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 you, you come out of the care system and then you obviously was back on the street. Um and, and then like you said, you 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 was raging. Um did, did, did you just then like just fall into crime? It was, or, or was you doing security first, door work? No, 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 no. Then I got found by my own personal customato, my martial arts instructor, Ronnie Colwell. He got me when I was 15. And he said to me, I can see something inside of you and I'm gonna bring it out of you. And in the process of doing that, I'm gonna make you or break you. I ended up calling that little white guy Pops. Yeah, yeah, I went on to become, I'm, I'm more known for my martial arts than anything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, in 2012, we brought uh, a friend of mine called Kenny Rainford brought Mike Tyson over. Kenny allowed me yeah, yeah, to have Ronnie presented with his Lifetime Achievements Award. Yeah, I already knew Mike from, from before. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Mike said, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll do it. The best compliments I ever got paid. Mike Tyson is presenting my custom motto. And he said, Mike Tyson says, this is his custom motto. Yeah. And here's the similarities between I and Mike Tyson. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, born in the ghettos, crime tour gets crime tour tour ghettos, bullied as children, found a white mentor, trained by that white mentor, yeah, to become a champion fighter, yeah. And Mike said that about me. You understand? Yeah, I'm at the bar and missed it all. My wife told me, you understand? Yeah, yeah. I'm all, all my karate buddies, yeah, are there because we're given. We're given 
our karate master, Ronnie Colwell, may he rest in peace, his Lifetime Achievement Award, yeah? He, he was supposed to be dead in 2013. Yeah, 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 right. I was in prison. He hung on. I came out of prison in January. He hung on, hung on. I went to see him, got out in January. He said, I can go now that I've seen you. Yeah, and he died in the February. Uh, yeah, yeah. And see, see, there's people that believe I hate white people and I'm a racist, yeah, against white people. I ended up calling that white guy Pops. I'm not a racist, yeah. I, I, I tell you what white people I hate. Racist white people. I hate racists. I fought them my whole life, yeah. But if you're a, if you're a white guy that's not a racist, I've got I've got lots of friends that that are my good 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 close friends, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I'm supposed to be going to Cornwall with one, yeah, yeah right. That haven't got a racist bone in the body, you understand? Yeah, and with me and them, have no issues. Yeah, so so I got honed. The ra the so so now yeah yeah right. I became a deadly fighter. Now, do you remember, are you old enough to, to remember the loos that used to go downstairs? The to toilets, outside toilets? They have them by the parks and it was like- Yeah, the, of course, pu pu yeah, yeah. Public lavatories. I know yeah. I look young, but I'm, yeah. I'm 53, so I'm uh, okay. <laughs> not that Okay, <laughs> well, that's where, all of, that's where all the queens used to go. Right. Yeah, that's where all the queens used to go. So there's me and my mate called Lee Daly. And we're about 14 and 15. And this is how I stumble along across the crime, the crime of taxing. Yeah. It's before 1979. So homosexuality is Ill illegal. So we used to pray on the years. They still mugged them, street, you know, street robberies. Yeah. yeah, it's called mugging. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, so then, the police end up at the dojo because there's been a space of robberies, yeah, <laughs> where the people have been getting kicked in the head from 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 standard position. So they've realised, yeah, right, right, that it's, it's got to be quite, it's got to be karate people. It's got to be people doing martial arts. Yeah, Ronnie Colwell sets up a club, Liverpool Eight, Taker Street. Yeah, yeah, five of us ended up in the England team. You understand? Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, uh, natural athletes. Yeah. So, so, so Ronnie, they, they came, they came, yeah, and to, to see Ronnie. And, and Ronnie got, got rid of them, but then he, he brought us in and he said, I know that's you and I know that's him. Right. Me and, me and AJ. Right. Yeah, yeah. You need to pack that in. Yeah, right. Don't want the police coming here uh, uh, doing that. And he had quite a, a control of us. Yeah, right. But we were 16, 17, yeah, yeah, not really good. I'm, I'm a painter by day. I'm doing, doing uh, painting paint, paint and decorating. I even come down to London to paint and paint and decorate. Yeah. It was the 1981 riots where I came of age, mate. That was the toxic rights, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now they call it a riot. We called it an uprising. Yeah, because you've got to remember now, at that time, yeah, and people don't know yet, yet, right? The police had the foot on their neck, yeah, right? Now, we were telling, we were telling people in the 80, 80, 81s, please beat you up, please do this. No, and everyone called us liars. Now there's mobile cut phones and mobile cameras. Everybody knows it happens now, yeah, right? But nobody believed us when we were saying it was happening to us, yeah? This is what Merseyside police used to do. They'd get you in the Land Rover in the South End, and they drive you to the bull ring or the north end and sound a horn. Yeah, they've dropped you in bandit country. You understand? Yeah, you got to remember at them time, black guys couldn't come out to South End on their own. If you came out to South End, let me explain it. Yeah, 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 right. We're in the South End with our backs to the Maisie. Yeah, we're surrounded by Lodge Lane boot boys. Air road boot boys, park road boot boys, air road boot boys, speak boot boys, Garston boot boys, all, all racist skinheads. Yeah, yeah. Ben Sherman shirts, Arrington Crombies, yeah, braces, Fleming jeans, yeah, and Oxblood airway that they call shine stompers. That's what they used to call us shines. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. And they used to go uh, uh, hunting. 
Yeah, yeah. Come, oh. people, people don't know what it was like in Liverpool. You understand? It sounds like some sort of like in hillbilly place in America. Listen, listen, listen. It's fucking listen, crazy. Listen, that's the way it was. Yeah, right. Now you've got to remember. Yeah, right. Liverpool has Liverpool scousers. Yeah, yeah, right. Have a reputation for being militant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Liverpool Black Scousers with even more militants. Yeah, now, here's, here's the topography of it, yeah, right? It, people don't know. You see, you have Enoch Powell, Rivers of Blood Speech. The, the immigration are taking over. What you don't know is when Enoch Powell was the Minister of Health, he was inviting West Indians over to come work in, in the health service. Yeah, right? Because after the war, yeah, yeah, Britain was almost leveled by the Nazis. Yeah, yeah, and the, the place had to be rebuilt. So we were from, 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 it's from uh, 1948 to 1971. If you'd been born in that, in, you're born in that period, you're a Windrush baby. Yeah, yeah, right. By 1980, those immigrants had children and we were 21, 22. We'd been into the English schools. Yeah, yeah. So we knew the streets weren't paved with gold. Because the West Indies that come over, yeah, were very respectful. This was the motherland. Yeah, this was this. Yeah, right, right. We just knew it, what it was. Yeah, right. And then they were, they was, they was, they were standing on our necks. Um, the chief constable at the time was Kenneth Oxford. Kenneth Oxford. He said, he said, the mixed race community of the South End. It wasn't called Oxford. It was called the South End. Didn't become toxic until after the rise. Uh, uh, are the result of the liaison between black West Indian African seamen and Irish white prostitutes. Yeah, yeah. Well, my mom and dad were married. You understand? That was the catalyst to the riots. Yeah, right. Now, Leroy Cooper is, is always credited with, with the starting of the uprising. Yeah, Leroy Cooper wasn't even there. Leroy Cooper tried to save his friend who'd been arrested for stealing the bike and was arrested. Yeah. On Mulgrave Street, facing facing the Caribbean Centre. Yeah. And then the coppers that arrested them looked at Andrew John, my brother still alive. Yeah. And was about to arrest Andrew. Andrew looked at me. Yeah, and it's called a look. When you, when you, it was me, it was me PIC, my partner in crime. When you PIC, give you the look, yeah, right? Now you've got to remember, he's 19, I'm 21, and we're both karate champions. Yeah, 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 right? He threw the first punch of the toxic uprisings. I threw the second. And the only person that I remember that was there to, to evidence this is a guy called I, Ivan Freeman. I remember seeing Ivan Freeman out the co corner of my eye. Yeah, and then there was there was doing a, there was doing a works on on um, on Mulgrave Street. Yeah, yeah, and we put the police car into the hole and took the uniforms off them, and the riot went from there. The riot lasted for thirteen days. I came of age in that riot. Yeah, before it's a pitch battle with the police. Yeah, and CS gas was used for the first time on the British mainland. It only ever been used in Northern Ireland. That's how they broke us up. I got a friend called Phil Robbo. Yeah, yeah, right. And and on the on the CS gas canisters, it said not to be fired at people. They shot him in the chest with it. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Messed them up a lot. Yeah, yeah, trust me, he, 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 he got a phenomenal amount of money in there. Yeah, one person died. The, the lad that was, was killed was a lad called David Moore. David Moore had the club foot. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Because they started to try to run us over with a Land Rover. Yeah, right. And because David couldn't run fast, he got caught and run over and killed. Two coppers were charged with manslaughter, but he got a not guilty. Yeah. About, about 500 coppers were injured. 
or was it 700 couples injured, 500 arrests, and the damage was 11, 11 million pound. Yeah, yeah, right. And then, and then uh, uh, Liverpool, the South End, they reported it as toxic, and that's when it became toxic. The press reported as that's when it became toxic. But then, yeah, 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 right. The police were terrified to come in, and it became a no-go area. You understand? It became a no-go area. Yeah, right, right. And we grew like redwoods then. We grew like redwoods. Yeah. And um, the crime of taxation, robbing people that couldn't go to the police, started off as street robberies at 14 and 15 as muggers. Do you know you said about kicking them in the head? Yeah. Would, would, it, would you just walk up to them and kick them in the head or would you ask them for whatever you wanted, and then if they didn't give it to you, you kick him in there. Yeah, I'll give you an example, yeah, yeah, right? And this is the one time we come on stuck, stuck. We did it to some Irish guy and he pulled the, Lee used to have a whip, and he lashed the whip around the legs. Yeah, 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 right? Um, um, and, and, no, it was about, it was about, it was about, it was about not giving them a chance, and, and it was about watches and going down the pockets. You understand? Yeah, right. Now, it's not, it's not, let me say this, I'm not glorifying it or I'm not boasting about it. I'm saying this is what we what did. Happens, yeah. This is what we did. Yeah, right. And I know it was wrong. Yeah, right. right. But the poverty we were facing, yeah, right. Uh, the unemployment, we couldn't get no, no one, listen, you, you, if you see the videos, yeah, yeah, they say they play the videos and they say show black people going up to the club. Have you got any tickets, lads? Or oh, you can't come in and walk away. Then a group of white kids come up and they all get let in. Yeah. People don't know what it was like. I can't describe it. You understand? You're right, right? You you you've had to have lived it. Yeah. And the unemployment was just just what it was. Yeah, right. Now, I'm seeing the magazines. I want this nice stuff. I want to have a nice car. Yeah, I want to have the, these these the, uh, 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 nice, nice stuff. Yeah, and and um, street robbery, robbing robbing homosexuals. You couldn't go to the police because this is before seventy nine. Before seventy nine, homosexuality was illegal. Right. Yeah, 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 right. So the, so they couldn't say I, 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 I was down in the toilets <laughs> uh, getting bummed. Yeah, and then they come up and rob me. You understand? They just couldn't go to the police. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Which was kind of the perfect crime. We then moved that over to drug dealers. Yeah, yeah, right. Because the it was it was and at the, at this time I was anti-white. Right. Yeah, I was anti-white. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it was the Dockers. Taka Comerford was one that I remember that were getting the parcels in. Yeah, yeah. This is the topography of it, yeah, right? The African seamen, yeah, yeah, would bring weed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So weed, yeah, yeah, was in the South End. Yeah, cannabis, yeah, African weed, West Indian weed. Yeah, yeah. But the dockers started with the powders. Yeah, and the powders was where the money was, yeah. By this time now, I've set up camp in the North End. I'm now I'm now running the security firm. Yeah, right, yeah. And, and um, I've got that crew, I've put that crew together. There's also two other guys on the crew from Heighton that I want to give a shout out to. Yeah, Jimmy, James Jimmy Styles. yeah, yeah. And Jeff McNeilish, both two white guys from Heighton. Yeah, yeah, that stood shoulder to shoulder with me. Yeah, 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 knee deep in battle. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that I love, you understand? Um, and a guy, we had a driver called Peter Ginley, and a guy came and seen us, yeah, and somebody had, had, had bumped him for the Kia Charlie, yeah, and he said to us, if you get if you get the Charlie back for us, yeah, yeah, that recoveries, if you get the Charlie back for us, I'll give you four or five grand. Yeah, yeah, right. Anyway, we got the Charlie back. Yeah, right. But Andrew was very good mates with Kersus and new Kersus, yeah, yeah. And Kersus told us what it was actually worth. You understand? 
Because Curtis Warren, uh, was was he already flying at that point? He was just, was he just getting going? Listen, listen, he was just beginning to bubble. Yeah, Curtis come to, 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 to thing yo, in, 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 in the, the late, yeah, right. And then like, and I've got to be careful what I say about the Smiths. So, but I can talk about Colin because Colin is dead. Okay. You understand? Yeah, yeah, right. And they were just beginning to bubble. Yeah, and the scouts was going to 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 Holland was just beginning to bubble. Yeah, yeah. That it was it was all early eighties moving through. Just, just it was just the, the beginning of the uh, the powders that went and the and 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 the cold. Yeah, because the eighties what messed everything up was crack. Right. You understand? Because crack was just whacked. Crack was whacked. Yeah. So anyway, um, um, Curtis clued us up to what, what 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 drugs were actually weird, yeah. And then we're work, we're I'm working I'm working in the North End, yeah. And people that were disgruntled on cruise, are being bumped over or being fucked off off people will come and find us, and give us the information. You understand? And then when you've got the information where the stash is, yeah, if you've got the wherewithals to go and get it, you've got the wherewithals to go and get it. You understand? Yeah, and then it's about who's got the biggest dick. You right. understand? Right. Yeah, right. And that's how it started. Yeah, and then it became prolific with me. You understand? And it became, it, it, it became um, um, so, so, so bad um, that, it started to branch out and I started to get jobs further afield. You're right, because it's like, it's like, say somebody went to buy something down south, yeah, yeah, and then they came back and then they'd seen where everything that was going on, yeah, and they started to go on and say, here's the address, this is this, this is there, this is there, and I'd give them a 5% fine, fine this fee, yeah, and we'd go and do it, <laughs> yeah, right? right. Yeah, right. I love that five percent five. No, no, no. Look, 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 look. It's like this. Yeah, yeah. Right. It was the perfect crime. Right. They can't call crime stoppers or the police, can they? <laughs> well, no. You, 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 you would, you would think so. Yeah, yeah. Right. But um, I can tell a story of of Tony and Mimi Yates because they're both dead now. Yeah, yeah. Right. And Tony Yates, I think it was, it was Mimi Yates. One of them. One of them. Yeah, yeah. He's the guy that got burnt with the iron. Right. You understand? Yeah, yeah. He was a hell dealer. Was yeah. he in Liverpool as well? Or was he, he was from Kirby. Oh, Kirby. He was he he, he he was come he was from Kirby. Yeah, yeah. And uh, um I'd I'd do or people associated with me, shall we say, would do one or two deals with them. Yeah. Yeah, build up a bit of trust with them and then put in a big order. Yeah, yeah. That's when they were getting bumped. You understand? And that was the formula. Yeah, yeah. And then not only would they get bumped, yeah, they get kidnapped, and they get tortured to give up the money too. Oh, so you got the drugs and their money? Well, you might as well take everything, mightn't you? In for the penny, in for the pound. No, no. And then in, in saying this, yeah, yeah, it's not to glorify. No, of course. Yeah, it's not, it's not to say I'm the big I am. Yeah, yeah, right. It, that's not what I'm doing. I'm saying this is what happened, Teddy. Yeah. This is what we were doing. I was a different, I was a younger man. I was a different man. I was full of rage. Yeah, you're right. The city was racist as I didn't like white people. And I used to rob white people left, right and center as much as I could. Yeah. He was the devil. No, 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 <laughs> no, then, then. no, 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 no. They gave me that name. Oh. Um, listen, listen. Do you know what I modelled myself on? The British Empire. Wow. Yeah. If you're not strong enough to hold on to what you got, we're gonna come and take it off. Yeah. 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 We'll make it our own, and then we'll <laughs> subjugate you too. I love that. So love that. that's what the British Empire did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Who called you the devil? Then was that just a, a listen, listen, name that somebody listen, came up with? Or? No. Here's the actual story. Here's the actual story to the devil. The actual story to the devil. People have heard mixed stories. He, 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 he's, he's died. He's dead now. Yeah, yeah, he's dead now. Yeah, yeah. And he was a mixed race lad. Yeah, right, right. Called Floyd, Floyd Jones or Floyd. Yeah, I think it was Floyd Jones. Yeah, if, he was a mixed race lad. Yeah. 
and he was he was nicknamed the devil. Yeah, yeah, right. His name his nickname was the devil. Yeah, my sister was building the hairdressers that I told you about. Yeah. Now my sister is what you call quarter cash. She looks white. Yeah, 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 right. If I have a if I have a baby with a white girl, my sister is that color. Yeah, yeah, right. She could pass for white, but she's not white. But she was married to a white guy. Yeah, our Tosh Tosh Rollins. Yeah, yeah. And Tosh is building in the in the hotel. It's building in, in building the hairdressers called Flicks on High Park Street, and he lives next. He lives next door. Yeah, yeah. He puts his head out, he, and our Tosh is banging away, banging away on a Sunday morning. Yeah, he puts his head out and he goes, if you don't fucking stop down there, I'll come down there and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah, Tosh carries on working. Then he's coming to the shop and, and he's ranting and raving, ranting and raving, ranting and raving. Yeah, yeah, right. Our Tosh doesn't know what to do. Now, my sister, yeah, yeah, right, she never ever taps into me, yeah, or never ever t tells me anything, right, because she always thinks I go too far. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But because he did what he did to her husband and it was their shop, she told me. Yeah, yeah. Um, it must have been 50 minutes, no more later than 15 minutes. I had them at a, at a front door with my foot on his neck. Say sorry to her, say sorry to her, say sorry to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's how the name, the devil, transferred from him to me. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, right. He possessed you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> eh, 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 eh. I just humbled him, yeah, right. right. But then, yeah, yeah. When 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 Graham Johnson was doing his research, yeah, 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 right. And he was speaking to people. To, uh, 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 he got everywhere, yeah. And he was speaking to people. And I think he spoke to a few people that had actually taxed. Got you it. Understand? And he said, "That man's a devil. That man's just evil. Yeah. That man just takes it to the next level." You understand? Yeah, yeah, right. And I'd already kind of half had the nickname the devil. Yeah, yeah, right. Because people, there's some people, John, do you know John Cusack? I know the name. John Cusack is, is a, is, is, he's wrote five bestsellers. Yeah, he's wrote right. five, five I've bestsellers. Read, oh, that's what I know from his writers. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now John Cusack wanted to do a rewrite with me. Yeah, on, on the devil decoded. And he got put in touch with me. And we were going to do a rewrite with me. But he, he still works with Graham Johnson, yeah. Uh, and Graham Johnson, yeah, yeah, uh, uh, robbed me. Yeah, right? I didn't cry that he robbed me. Got, got my money back, yeah, right. But uh, um, he's never apologized for what he did. Yeah, he's never he's never apologized for uh, 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 um, selling my rights to to Calamity Jane, Ellen Pompadour from Grey's Anatomy, yeah, uh, and. And, and he kicked me in the teeth at the lowest time of my life. Yeah. When I told him, yeah, 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 yeah. we'll ride this till the wheels fall off. Yeah, yeah. I let him keep, I let him, because I because I had money, I let him keep all the advance from the book. Yeah. Um, when we did um, the Danny Dyer thing, yeah, yeah, I let him keep all that money. Yeah, right, right. Because he had a kid in a small family. Yeah. And yeah. I didn't need it. Yeah, right. When it was time for him to share some money with me, he stole a lot. Wow. You understand? Yeah. So I don't want to work with a guy like that. So, nah. so, so, so even though John Cusa could do the rewrite with me, yeah, yeah, I said no. So there's a guy called Billy Moore. Billy Moore, I think his films, I can't remember, I always forget the name of his film, Cry Something, Cry Freedom or something his film's called. Yeah, it's been made into a, a top movie. His publisher is a guy called John, John, John Hawthorne. Yeah, John Hawthorne. So Billy put me into his publisher. Yeah, yeah. And I met him in Old Crompton Street. And I give him a couple of chapters of what, of what I've what I've wrote so far. Then I met him on the fort to see what he, 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 he thought of it. Yeah, and he's a little bit older than me. And we met I met him in in, in Old Crompton Street in, in just by Soho, one of the bars by right there. Very, very uh, 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 bohemian guy. Yeah, nice hat, well well dressed guy. And he said to me, I've read thousands and thousands of manuscripts. He says, and sometimes I read one, yeah, and one page and it goes in the bed. Yeah, yeah, right, I think that's what he's gonna say, he's done with uh -huh. mine, yeah, yeah, that's a load of shit. And he goes, I couldn't put what you read down. He said, you're a little bit all over the place. And I know that, because I kind of repeat myself when me writing, making me points. 
Yeah, I, 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 he said, you need a good daddy. Yeah, he said, he said, but I'll get you the good daddy. Yeah, I'll get you the good daddy. Yeah, yeah, right. And I'm supposed to have given the first manuscript by the end of just February, just gone. But I've, I've, I'm, all, I'm almost finished and I'm almost ready to pass it over to him. Yeah. But my mum's nearly 90. I don't think she's going to last this year. And I'm hoping to have it in, in, the, in the shelves for this Christmas. You understand? Yeah, right. But he says, he says, when you read a book, it's like, it's like it's flat water. He said, it's got to make you want to dive in and dive down and see what's happening. Yeah, right. Now, the decoding of the devil is not only my personal story, yeah? It's the story of the Windrush generation, yeah? Because I'm first generation British born black, yeah? you got to remember now, yeah? We were the last people to stand up to Tory corruption. We were the last people to say enough's enough. In 1981, we did it in Liverpool, we did it in Manchester, we did it in Leeds, we did it in London, and we did it in, 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 in Bristol St. Paul's. Yeah, yeah, we stood up to a to uh, Tory op uh, oppression. Yeah, yeah, and, we've, and we set the country on fire. Yeah, yeah, people forget this. That's my generation. And that story of my generation has never been really told from the perspective of those that were involved. And I believe it's my gift to write that story. Yeah. Yeah, and that story is in, in The Devil Decoded. And a guy that knows about writing, yeah, he reckons I've, I've found a new way of writing and it's fascinating. And I know I can tell a story and I know that I can write, yeah. I, 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 I just need a good edit, you understand? Yeah. And this is, this is, and this brings us full circle, yeah, to where I'm up to, yeah, right? So, I've been to Cape Church. I've got out. Sam Walker attacks me online, saying he's lying about Jimmy Savile, blah, blah, blah. He joins forces with the woman that, that accused me of rape. With the baby's mum who I've reported, because the stuff that's going on in the house, the baby needs taken off her. Eh? Yeah, yeah, right? And the, she, the, 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 the baby's mum, in 215, took naked photographs of me when I was sleeping. Yeah, right, without my permission. Yeah, ball of cold, balls out and everything, but you can see I'm asleep on the couch. Yeah, yeah. She's been pleasuring herself to those for two years. She then sees me in an altercation with, 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 with Sam Walker, yeah. Sends him the photographs of me. Sends him semi-naked photographs of the baby. Yeah, yeah. He puts them together, juxtaposes them. Yeah, and put this is Stephen French's baby. Yeah, she's 18 months old. He's been sexually interfering with her and she's only a baby. And upload that onto the internet. That goes viral. That goes viral. Yeah. So now, not only am I a snitch, not only am I an informer, I'm the rapist of men, women, boys, girls, and my own 18 month old baby. You understand? Now, I faced all that stuff, yeah? But this one, when that one took hold about me being a nurse, yeah? It led, 2018, that was 2017, it led to 10 men coming to my house. I got property, I got property in London where I live, and I got still property in Liverpool. Yeah. And if I went up to Liverpool, I'd stay in my house in Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, and I'm in my house in Liverpool Friday night. Lying on the couch watching the telly and in a crash at the back. I take no notices of it. I come, I come uh, to go into the kitchen to get a drink, and there's a guy standing in the uh, Auxiliary room, you know, where you have the washing machines in there. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. Dressed in head to foot in black. Yeah, yeah, right, right. But I've got an instinctive way to fight. It just comes on me. Yeah, so I'll go for him. But he's, he smashed the, the, the whole glass window that was in, in the back door and he dives through it. Yeah, right, right. And he escapes, but he cuts his leg on the thing, yo, and there's blood on, on, on the thing, yo. Um, 
I have to phone the police to get a, to get an insurance number to get the windows fixed and all that. Yeah, right. They say they want to come out and 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 do whatever they're doing. Yeah, right. I clean the blood off. Yeah, yeah. I clean the blood off. I don't let them get get the blood. Yeah. I just think it's, it it was just a breaking because the house has been empty for a while. Next day, next night, I'm there. Yeah. And all the French windows go in at the back. Yeah, yeah, right. All the French windows go in at the back. I look into the garden, yeah, yeah, right, right. And there's about between six and ten men, yeah, yeah, shouting go out. Yeah. They've got knives, they've got bars, they've got choppers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so have I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because of what had happened the night before. Now, you know, like, you know, like Thermopylae Pass in uh, the 300, it's oh, a narrow, yeah. in narrow space. You, so it's the French windows, the French windows are two windows, but it's only, you can only come through one like that. So I've only got a defender, you understand? Now, I've got a friend called Stephen Cole. Yeah, yeah. They caught him in a pub. They came in, yeah, 30 of them, white racists, and hacked them to death in front of his wife, 1994. Yeah, chopped him to bits, nothing left of him. Yeah, these were looking to do that to me. You understand? Yeah. But I had a hammer and a machete. And I told him, let's have it. Let's have it. And I've rushed, yeah, right, right, looking to crack skulls. Yeah, and take somebody with me if I'm going. Yeah. Do you know what happened, Terry? They turn tail and run. They turn tail and run. They've been online, I had a shit in Frenchie's back garden and, and, and all this. Yeah, yeah, right. And they did. Somebody shit, shit me back garden. But here's the beauty of it now. My neighbor phoned the police. Yeah, yeah, the police come. Yeah, the police have, the police have seen me with, with weapons in my hand. The couple wants to arrest me for having weapons in my hand. They've, they've, they've all took off now. The couple wants to arrest me. Tweedale. PC Tweedale, yeah. I've got all the crime numbers, yeah, yeah. Everything will be in the book doc documented for everybody to check, yeah. So he says to me, he says to me, Ugh. but my neighbor's an Asian guy. He goes, no, you you need to come and see this tape. You need to come and see this video, yeah, yeah. It's all on me, me neighbor's video camera, yeah. How many of them is? Me chasing them up the road, running away. It's all on camera receipts for what I'm saying, yeah? The couple goes and sees, see, sees the, the video, yeah? Takes the, gets the video, the couple, the police have got the video, takes the video, comes to me and says, hey, Mr. French, you're gonna want to, we're gonna need the statements off you. I said to me, you're gonna, you just wanted to fucking nick me? Get the fuck. Yeah. He, he goes, but, but I've seen what happened. I said, I don't care. Yeah, I don't care, eh, 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 eh. and I'm not making no statement. You can fuck off. Boarded the house up, went and stayed in a hotel. I'm trying to get that tape off them. Yeah, I'm trying to. They've still got that tape, and I'm trying to get that tape off them. Yeah, yeah, right. Because I, when when I, when I, I, I do the book, yeah, I want to put links in it where you can go and watch it. You understand? Where you can go? Where you can go and see? Because I call it my receipts. Yeah, I call it my, my video. Yeah, if I wasn't. If I was the fake that they tried to say I was, right, yeah, they'd have got in my house that nice and killed me, chopped me to bits, yeah. But I seen, must have been six to 10, maybe, a gang, yeah, yeah, of, of a, a, a white racist motherfuckers shouting pedo out, pedo out, yeah, yeah, right, because of what Sam Walker did to me. You understand? Yeah, with, with the, the online stuff, yeah, of, of saying that I was ripping my own daughter. Yeah, seen them off. Um, but it took a toll, Teddy. That last one took a toll. And 219, 220, I decided no more. No more. Closed all my social media down. Stopped going to Liverpool. Stayed in this house when I'm living in London. Went to therapy. Got everything to do everything I, I, I was doing. January, uh, 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 we're up to July now, July 2023. Very close, coming to the end now. 
J July 2023. Liverpool Children's Services, get in touch with me. My daughter's now set seven. Remember in school, you had the tall kid, you had yeah. the fat kid, you had the smelly kid, yeah, yeah, yeah. You had the scruffy kid. My kid's the smelly, scruffy kid. She's going to school hungry, yeah. Disheveled, needing need to be washed. The school have made um, what they call a safeguard and referral. Because I've got parental rights and I've already made a residency order, I've tried to get the kid in 2018 and I failed. Yeah, because it was too close to jail. They have to notify me. They have to notify me, yeah, right? With a view that they're taking the baby out of the home and do I want to have the baby? Of course I want to have the baby. So I have to be parentally assessed again. I asked for the same people that failed me in 2018 and said I weren't ready. Yeah, yeah. Because she told, she was the one who told me, go and do the work. Go to therapy. Tack your, your offending behavior. Do some courses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And keep your nose clean. So I've got seven years under my belt, no arrest. I've got five years therapy under my belt, no arrest. Yeah, they come and parentally assess me. They take hair strand drug, t t drug test. Yeah, and now I have the and now I have the paperwork that I'm fit to be a primary caregiver to this child, the one that these people started separated. Yeah, we're, we're right in the process now of having of having the discussion. Yeah, yeah, of where the baby goes to live. And hopefully she'll, be, she'll come to live with me because I've got a 10 year plan for her. She's seven now. I've got a 10 year plan for her. And in that 10 years, yeah, I'll have her ready for university like I did with my first daughter. Because us Frenchies, we can raise our own without help from social services. Yeah, because I've done it twice already. I've got a grown son and I've got a grown daughter. 220, my brother dies. I go to Liverpool and we bury him. And Jed Mach, Jed McCormack, persuades me to do Billy Moore's podcast. Now you've got to remember, tell I think the bus has passed me by. I've given it all up. They beat me. I was broken. That, that last allegation broke me, man. When everybody was saying that I was my own baby. It affected me greatly, Mr. Stone. Yeah, the big, tough, wicked, strong, invincible Frenchman was beaten down. Laid down, licked his wounds, couldn't take it. Then those around me picked me up. I went I went on there in in in, in 2020. Yeah. By December, I'd been drug tested, everything's fine. By December, I'd seen the book guy. Then you get in touch. Sean, I would get in, in touch. And I'm starting the process again. I've got my energy back. I've got my fight back. But what I won't do this time is I won't fall off. I'm pissed to whip somebody and become an idiot. Yeah, and I'm writing the book and I'm doing the podcasts. And then there's a guy called Rocco that works with Sean Atwood. I'm gonna do 12 one hour documentaries about my life. Yeah, make my own legacy for my grandchildren to know who I am and see, yeah, yeah right. And this is the process that I took last time. Yeah, and then we were talking about serendipity. Yeah, about because you said to me, your, your life story should be a film. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, right. Well, that's what I'm trying to head. That's what I'm trying to do. But it's not for the glorification of me. It's not for my own financial gain. Yeah, yeah. What it's for, yeah, is to build the Andrew John Memorial Skill Center and to finish the work that I started 20 years ago. Yeah, because remember now, 
Yeah, yeah. I had the opportunity to go and live in America. I had millions in the bank. Go and live in America and, and, and live in a gated community and nobody would even know who I was now. But I've been through this process. Now, when I was in jail, yeah, I lost everything. I got robbed. I got robbed. I trust the people. My accountant, my, my wife. Yeah, yeah. I could put her in prison, but I'm going to put my wife in prison with divorce now. Yeah, yeah. I told me accountant because she signed certain papers to get certain stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I've got the documents. My daughter doesn't believe me. Yeah. But I've got the documentation where she came up to the prison and got my Lloyd's business bank card and my Barclays personal bank card. And she emptied both accounts. You understand? I've forgiven her. You yeah, right? Because she was a good girl. Yeah, yeah. She was loyal and faithful to me. Yeah. And I climbed on everything. I climbed on top of everything that moved. So when she had a chance to pay me back, she did. You understand? So that, that, that's, that's moved on. Yeah. Um, this will make you laugh. Do you know the real thing? You to me are everything. The sweetest song I can sing. Oh, I, baby. I was married to his eldest daughter. He passed away. Yeah, yeah. He come into millions. I took her to court to see if I could get my money back. I, I divorced her. She didn't divorce me. Yeah, but it got real acrimonious when I was asking for their bank accounts. It was upsetting my daughter and my granddaughter. So I signed a settlement and said, y y you've got away with it. Yeah. And I'm doing what I'm doing. I've got nowhere near what I used to have, but I'm okay. You get me? And I'm back again. I'm following um, um, the same format as last time. And I'm revitalized and re-energized. There's a rumor, and this is the, the I'll, I'll finish with this story tell. Yeah. There's a rumor goes around that I can't go to Liverpool. If I go to Liverpool, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, watch what happens to me. Yeah. On the 18th, of December 2023, I went to Anfield with my three piece chicken and chips on. So everybody could see me because I go where I feel like. Yeah. And when I was in Anfield, you know, the only thing that happened to me, I got asked for the loads and loads of selfies. Same as when I went to the final. Right. But the most interesting thing, Tal, is this. Like I told you, I'm a born again Christian. I'm not a traditional Christian. I'm not a singing and dancing Christian. They're my brothers and sisters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a soldier. I'm a warrior. Yeah. And I'm fighting the dark. Yeah. I went to Bethnal House of God Church, Bootle in the Mons. Pastor Graham Jones said, I've got somebody that I want you to meet. Now, several times I've had contracts put on my life. Yeah, people paid to kill me. The most serious one was when the Irish came to kill me. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the IRA came to kill me. He introduces me to this guy. I've never, I don't know the guy from the IRA that came to kill me. As he's walking across the floor in the, in the church, I see him, I say, you're the guy that was paid to kill me. He was paid 30K to kill me. Late, late, late 90s, early 2000s. He goes, no. It was 80. It was 80. Yeah. And we hugged each other in the church and we forgave each other. There's a guy called Joey Owens. Joey Owens has wrote a book, Race Wars to Door Wars. And he, he talks about this story in that book. Yeah, and he says, I cried my way out of getting killed. I'm doing my own podcast. It's called the Double G Podcast, The Gentleman Gangster. And I'll bring him on that podcast with his face blacked out. Yeah, because I'll be presenting all my receipts for everything that I'm saying. Yeah, there'll be blowback and, uh, off, off this, and there'll be blowback of all the things that I've been saying where people deny it, but I'm gonna have my own platform that I control, yeah? And I'll have my screen behind me. And when I'm saying, 
I got a letter from the prime minister. The letter from the prime minister will flash up behind me. You understand my receipts? I'm a man on a mission. And when I do this, it's for my grandchildren and my children, the legacy. And, and, and somewhere along the line, an investor will come in and say, do you have a script? Do you have this? People need to know your story. And this is the plan. Thank you very much, Mr. Stoll. No, thanks for coming on. There was, there, was, there was a couple of things that I wanted to ask you, though, Stephen, before, yeah, uh, she can. before we wrapped it up. Okay. Um, uh, when you said you was doing your own podcast, I wonder whether you was going to call it Now Then Now Then. But no, but I think that's a good name for a podcast, all jokes aside. Yeah. And what I wanted to ask you, you know, when we was talking about um, when you was on, uh, uh, you was taxing the drug dealers. Yeah. And obviously we was talking about Curtis and, um, and then obviously we then went into some other stuff and then that led us obviously right up to the present day. Yeah. But a lot of our viewers and listeners may not know all your story. And what fascinated me was when, when you said um, you was, there was a the guy that, that died and we were just about to talk about that. Um, but we didn't, we didn't finish. And, and I think you said that he, that, that you'd, you'd, you'd order some drugs, pay for them. And then obviously then you put in a big order and that's when you go and get that. But then you'd also then get the, the, the get them to pay up the cash as well. So like you said, you based it on the British empire yeah. and you took the lot, but, but I mean, what was, what would you say was the biggest hole that you, you did? So there's a guy sitting in prison at the present moment in time. Yeah. For the murder of Tupac. Yeah. For giving too much information about himself. Right. On a podcast. Right. Yeah. Because you can be sure, basically, that police watch everything I say. Right, okay. And everything I do. Right. Yeah. Let's just say that the figure that Graham Johnson used was exaggerated. Okay. Yeah, it was exaggerated. Yeah, you're right. But let's just say in 2007, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, 2005, when I wanted to buy a, a, a American green card. Yeah, yeah. You had to be able to buy an American business. Right. You had to buy, be able to buy a home, pay yeah. your taxes. Yeah, and showed them $2 million in the bank. Right. Yeah, yeah right, right. Um, and I could well do that. Right. I could well do that. Yeah, right. Now, I made a lot of money taxing drug dealers. But what people don't understand, yeah, right, is in 1994, I stopped when my daughter was born. Right. Because I wanted to be around for my daughter. And I went to work. Yeah. And when I went to work, I had one of the biggest security firms in the Northwest. Yeah. 500 men working for me. Wow. Yeah. Five million pound turnover, 20% profit, yeah, yeah. Driving around in a convertible, like, sorry, no, driving around in a Bentley. Right. Bentley fine spare, yeah, yeah. Paid for, yeah, yeah. And had the police up my ass with a microscope, yeah, right. yeah. Always at my accountants, yeah. But I made more legitimate money than illegitimate money, right? Because when I was, um, when I was, doing security work, yeah. I was the first one to bring in the tags. Yeah, I used to give them a good service. Now I used to say to my clients, if you're unhappy with me, give me seven days to turn it around. And if I don't turn it around in seven days, I'll walk off, your, I'll walk off the site. And they liked that. I had all the car showrooms in Liverpool. Yeah. Yeah, I had blue chip clients caught up for Allied London. I had a lot of industrial estates. Mind you. Yeah. Um, and, I was also uh, uh, doing commercial debt recoveries at the same time, pensions at the same time. Now, the, the QSs and, and, and the people that used to build properties, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. They taught me about cheap money and, le and, and lending money. Yeah, yeah, right. They taught me about two ups and two downs. I specialized in two ups and two downs. Yeah, you buy it for, for 45, 50 at an auction, 
You spend 15 on it. Yeah, yeah, right, right. So it now stands you 60. It remortgages at 80. Yeah, you rent that out. Yeah, right, right. And you remortgage it. So you pay no capital gains. And you do that over and over and over and over again until you've got 30 properties. Yeah, right. Then you can cash in a property a, a year to live as your pensions. I also bought uh, secondhand pensions. Right. Yeah, 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 right. In the old days, yeah, yeah, right, when you got a mortgage in the late 80s, you also had to get an endowment policy with it. Remember yeah, that. right, right. So, so the, if you died, your mortgage was covered. Yeah, yeah, right. People, people would f default on the mortgage, but still have the endowment policy. So that had intrinsic value. Yeah, right. I used to buy them. You understand? Yeah, yeah, I used to buy them and pay, say, say the, the, the monthly premium was 50 or 60 quid. I used, to, I used to buy them. That's what I did. Yeah, yeah, right. When I went to prison, everything collapsed. Right. You understand? When I went to prison, when, but when it was my turn to be taxed, right. when it was my turn to be robbed, I didn't squeal. Right. I didn't cry. I took it like a man. Yeah, because I'd robbed and taxed enough people. So I got robbed. Uh, 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 people that were close to me that I trusted. Yeah, 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 right. The only person that never really let me down was my Jewish accountant. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He saved a lot of stuff for me. Yeah, he, 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 and he actually came to visit me in prison and he was the one that told me what was going on with my stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, the... 20 million pound in the devil book. It was artistic license. Right, okay. yeah, yeah, Sounds yeah. good though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, see, 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 see. Uh, um, I never, I wasn't the author. Right. Uh, yeah, right. right. Um, um, the content that I put in, yeah, yeah right, w w was all true. Everything that was in that book happened. Yeah, yeah, right. Some of the stuff didn't happen. It's like, and I have to be careful. I have to be careful of owning up to certain crimes. Got it. You understand? You're right, because there's a guy now sitting in jail charged with Tupac's murder because of what he said on a, on a podcast. You understand? You're right. So that's why I always say allegedly. Got this it. is why I always I, I sort of say this because I still get watched. Yeah, yeah. Even though I'm not doing anything and even though I've been out to Liverpool. Yeah. yeah. Um, they still like to put me away. They still like to. They still like to put me away. But they haven't. They haven't got no opportunity. And 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 my my main goal now. Yeah, yeah. Is to set the record straight about myself. Got it. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Because. And this this is to those who call me a police informer. This is to those who call me a homosexual of men, women, boys, girls, and my own baby daughter. It's all lies. I'm the realest fucker to come out of Liverpool. One of them anyway. Yeah, and everybody knows who I am. I mean, I think you've definitely put the record straight today, yeah. Frenchie, and you've you've put your side of the story, and like you said, you've got the receipts. See, see, so. see it's a process, tell. Yeah, it's, it's a process and I'm laying down the foundation. Yeah, you're right. And it's like, it's like I apologize to Lawrence and Andrew O'Donnell. Yeah, because I said in Dave Smith, the, the kid died and he come online, he's a liar, he's a liar, nobody died. That's what I was told. Yeah, yeah, with regards to when my house got firebombed. Yeah, as, as a result of that. Yeah, I met with Dave Smith. Yeah, yeah, at a... Um, British home stores. Everything I said was true. Yeah. So if I get, I will make mistakes and I will get certain things wrong and I'll misremember certain stuff. But I'm telling you, tell, yeah, right, right. I'm practicing a policy of rigorous honesty. Yeah. Brutal truth. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes the truth's ugly. Yeah. But it's still the truth. Yeah. Right. Because I know men that have stood from stood in the dock and sang a man's name and they still walk through. You get me? Yeah. yeah, yeah right. I went on Billy Moore's podcast. Yeah. And yeah. and when when I when I landed in prison in, in 213, yeah, yeah, right. The whispers, because it was two days in the prison, it was in the paper straight away, 
when he gets here, watch what happens to him. This was uh, HMP Liverpool. What, watch what happens to him. You get this, you get that, you get that. Yeah, I come out on the fours. The my first morning, yeah, top off shaving my head. Who wants it? But not calm, white like a wild man. Yeah, any mother f in this jail. Yeah, and you could have heard a pin drop. It's been verified in the comments. I was there, he's not lying. I seen it, nobody said nothing to him. Yeah, Stephen French challenged 250 men. They were going, they were going, they were going well, what do we going to do to me when I got in jail? It, they say it all the time, until you're standing next to me. Right. Yeah, and, and, and until, um, um, and it's like, it's like you, you met me, you asked me how old I am, I'm 64. I'm 64, yeah, yeah, right. I can still lift uh, 148 reps. Yeah, I can run an eight minute mile. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm super fit. I keep myself super fit. Still got a flat tummy. You understand? Yeah, right. Because I've looked after myself. I eat right. And I tell the truth. Last time around, I wasn't 100%. I was still uh, 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 snorting cocaine and fucking horse. You understand? Yeah, right. I'm celibate now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've had sex with a couple of girls in the last five years. Yeah, you're right. I don't do drugs. I don't smoke weed. Yeah, but I love six or seven pints of Guinness on a Friday night. Yeah, right. Because I have to have a little uh, 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 blow off. I gave up, tell. I gave up 2020. Said, okay, I've had enough. And I laid down. Yeah, yeah. 2023. Things changed, not f for me. Yeah, yeah, people around me picked me up. Yeah, and then it's like, it's like, and my me, me body, my me flesh is tingling now as I'm speaking to you. The serendipity of this, yeah, right? Because this this may end up a collaboration. It will be. I'm this will end up a collaboration. Yeah, right, right, because you're, you're, you're there, I'm here. Yeah, and my people, the Hollywood people, yeah, 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 yeah Jonathan Mackay Gruber, they almost came because they wanted to meet you. You understand? Yeah, you, because they wanted to meet you because they know of you. They know they know that that you were trying to cr get guy stories done. Yeah. That that this is all this is all part of your the the arrows in your quill. It's not just this podcast. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You your in the entertainment industry. You're part of the British film industry. You're a well-known guy. Yeah, yeah. And there's doors that are not open to me that are open to you. You understand? And and it's not, it's not a, um, it's not like I'm I'm trying to use you. Yeah, you're right. It's it's all about contacts. It's all about who you know. That's it's all it's all, all all about if if you've if you've got the story, because it's all storytelling, isn't I make it? I'll make a deal with you. I'll use you, you use me. As long as you make a load of money, I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, well, no, no, that's, that's, um, that's core business. Yeah, absolutely. That's not, that's core business. Yeah, right. And then look, it's like this. Yeah, yeah right. I had an opportunity. This is, the, I've got, I've got honor and integrity tattooed on my back in Latin with two dragons. Yeah, you're right. I had an opportunity to work with John Cusack, right. who wrote five bestsellers. Said, let me rewrite your book. Yeah, yeah. I turned them down, right. yeah, right? right? Because I don't want to work with the guy that robbed me. You right. understand? Fair yeah. enough. Always threatening, threatening me with the police. Yeah. Uh, um, it's probably when you, when you walk past his house with a gun and a machete. No, no, <laughs> I'm joking, no, I'm no, 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 listen, listen, listen. I understand, I understand, right. I understand. I understand that I create fear in people. Right. Yeah, yeah. I was in a group, in, in, in the therapy group. Yeah, yeah, right. And this is when I came to realize that. Yeah, and there was a couple of murderers in the group. Yeah, yeah, right as well. One arsonist, a couple of murderers. And it was it was a group for violent offenders addressing their behavior. I, cre I give us a nickname, <laughs> Monsters Inc. <laughs> 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 that, that was the nickname I give it. Was that yeah, a WhatsApp right? group? But, but, yeah. but then, see, see, there was a guy in there, yeah, right? And I learned so much about myself by watching him because he didn't realise, he's a nice guy, but he didn't realise how scared he was. 
right. the people. And I'd, well, I, I'm, I'm being friendly, yeah, but I don't know that people know who I am. Right. And, it, and it, it, it perturbs them. And that's what kind of happened to Graham. Because I actually like Graham, yeah, right? Graham can't help himself around though. Right. You understand? Yeah, 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 right. He loses his mind when the money gets involved. Yeah, and it's, it spoils them all. The, it spoils them all the time. Yeah, and it, 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 it's a good one. It's like when I watch um, Piers Morgan on on the TV. Yeah, yeah. Graham used to work with Piers Morgan. Yeah, yeah. And he did the uh, the phone hacking of Millie Dowler. Do you remember Millie Dowler? The young yeah, girl, I remember the, reading about the, it. The, 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 about the young girl. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Piers Morgan. Yeah, yeah. Right. Knew everything. Yeah, I've got the inside track. I loved them to invite me on the show. I told, I'll tear them a new one. It's an horrible swat. There yeah. you go, Paige. You got an yeah. offer. You got an offer. Yeah. And you guess. Yeah. No, no. <laughs> it's, 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 um, it's, no. We just, we just, it's, it's just, it's just knowing certain people. You understand? Because the mirror worked out of Canary Wharf. Yeah, when Graham, when, when, when Graham worked for the mirror. Sunday mirror, oh, on the mirror, anyway. And he was, and the news of the world. And he was the editor, wasn't he? And one of them anyway, but right. anyway, no, no, what's going on. So yeah. I think that's about yeah. it. No, French, you honestly, it's amazing. No, before, to no you. sorry. Before we finish, yeah, you're right. Is there anything else you would like to ask me? Um, do you know something? I, 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 I think the only reason I was asking you about the, when you were taxing the drug dealers, was it was just, just to give some context on to people that haven't read the book. You know, uh, that's, so, 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 so that was, that well, was. Listen, listen, listen. Him. What, what, why don't you tell us one of the stories in the okay. book? Okay, that, so whether it's so, alleged or not. So, <laughs> so there was a, there was a guy called let's call him Ginger. Okay, yeah, I'll take it. He had red hair. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and Ginger was a cocaine dealer. Yeah, and I had a premises on Garmoy Road. I used to call it the House of Horrors. Yeah. And we 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 would we would we would have people that would have business with the guys, yeah, and build up a relationship, yeah, until there was trust. Yeah, and then we'd have them come down to the house and there'd be an alcove, yeah, and we'd have them walk down the hallway, have a girl sitting at, at the bottom with big joeys, so that that's so all the coast. And then when they went past me, they get snatched. You understand? Now, I'm, I'm six foot three, 200, then I was 225 pounds of prime black male. Yeah, yeah. And one of them strong, you understand? Yeah, get you by around the neck, you're gonna last for four seconds. Yeah. And it's exactly what I was explaining to Danny Diet in the Danny Diet film. You wake up tape, taped up. Yeah. So he's woke up tape, but he's, 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 give, he's, he's, he realized, and this is what I always did, yeah, yeah, right? I use psychological intimidation more, yeah, right? Because if I cut them or do anything to them, they've got something to show the police, you understand? It's like, it's like when Mimi Yates got burnt on his back, yeah, yeah, he had something to show the police. He got burnt with an iron, you know, and he told a story that he just came to sell his car. You understand? Yeah, yeah, right. And my friend, Darren, yeah, yeah, ended up getting seven years for that. You understand? He ended up getting seven years jail for that because they made a ca case out of that because the police will believe what they want to believe in order to get, in order to get people. Yeah, yeah. I was arrested. For, I was arrested for that case. Yeah, yeah, right. But the, the, the policeman said I had a scar on my right arm. Yeah, but it's on my left. Yeah, yeah. And I, f I came across, it's the first time I came across my solicitor, Paolo Martini of Cobbley's. Yeah. I was on the run. I was on the run. I was living in Manchester under an assumed name. And Johnny Phillips got a message to me that I was going to be on Crime Watch the next day. Yeah. So I tried to fly out from city airport to Rotterdam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And anyway, the passport I had didn't work. The, 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 and, and I'm sitting on the plane and it's like in a film, you know, he's sitting here in the film and the big black guy gets <laughs> walked off in handcuffs. Right. That was me. <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Yeah, yeah, right. And I had, I had five grand stuck, stuffed down my balls. 
yeah. And my mates, my mates got me this this new brief, Paolo, this new shit off brief called Paolo Martini. Paolo Martini said to me, say nothing, you're going home and you're going home with your five grand. Yeah. <laughs> I said, what? He goes, yeah, say, say nothing, going home. This guy can go. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it was all, it was, it was all about, it was all about the scar. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the scar's on my left arm. And, but they had it down on my right arm. Yeah. So they said, he said, he uh, said, um, um, show them your right arm. So I showed them your right arm. It's a no scar. And, 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 and he said, show us your left arm. He goes, nope. Doesn't have to show you your left arm. Says in the paperwork, right arm. He's got no scar on his right arm. It's not him. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't me. Yeah, it was somebody else. Anyway, so, so, and I get me 5,000, I get me 5,000 pounds back. This is when I knew Paolo had in integrity. Yeah. I offered him some of the money, you understand? And he refused to take it. He said, I can't take your money that way. Yeah, yeah. He said, you can pay what you can pay. You can pay your solicitor's fees. Yeah, you're right. But I don't want, I don't, I, I don't do that. Yeah. Uh, me and him ended up becoming friends. Yeah. I was on, I was on the uh, case. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't have the money to pay his fees. Yeah. Right. So I had a different solicitor. But I got a, I got a meeting with him. Yeah, I got him. I, I, he actually came and, and did a video call with me, and he, he said to me, "If they're offering you to plead guilty to threats to kill, yeah, snatch their hands off. Do not go on trial for rape in Liverpool." He said, "Cause your cards being marked, you will not get a not guilty. They'll make sure that you don't get a not guilty. Yeah, you're right because." Believe it or not, yeah, yeah, the noble juries, the noble juries, and I don't mean the noble juries to get people off the cases, the noble juries to make sure the guilty comes in. You understand? Like put a, a, a prison officer or a screw, a screw or a, a probation worker, or even maybe both on a jury, and you only need to. Have you ever watched 12 Angry Men? The film 12 Angry Men? Yes. Yeah, yeah. You only need one person in there going, going the, in the other direction. And eventually all, all, all the others are going the other direction. So yeah, um, to finish on with the story. So Ginge now, Ginge gives up, the, give, he's give up the location, he's give everything, yeah, right. rise. We sent somebody out to, to, to go and uh, get the kit back. I leave him with my, my two, two, two lads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've got him in the, they've got him in the boot now. He's in the boot of the car. Yeah. And I go to, I, I go to shop. Yeah, yeah. I go to shop to get something. I come back, yeah, he's kicked the, he's, he's kicked the, uh, the lid off the boot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Escaped, yeah, yeah. And, and apparently there was about 250, ba 250 grand in, in his, ki his, his kit bag, his, his punch bag that he had in, in, in his house. He had his money in, in, in his bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was on our, our way to us and he inter intercepted it. So that's one that failed and I'll share that one with you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, it wasn't all winners. <laughs> yeah. No, listen, listen. Um, um, sometimes there was a dead, a dead but I'll share, I will share this one with you. Yeah, I'll share. This is why the lad who shot my brother had more reason to shoot me. Right. Okay. So... Me, my brother, and a guy called Modge. Yeah, yeah, we're the crew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And allegedly we're bringing stuff over from Holland. Yeah, and we're selling it, yeah. His missus comes and sees me and says, he's getting high on his own supply and he's, he's, he's doing crack now. He's doing crack and everything's going wrong. So, and he was the banker. So we've gone and we've checked the kitty and the kitties, this has got to be, Andrew's alive, so it's got to be 89, 90. The kitty's 30 grand light, which is getting close to 200 grand now. You understand? But the kitty's light. So I've tackled them over it. And he said, he said, oh no, no, but I know this house with this drug, drug deal it is. Yeah, and if you get into the house, yeah, yeah, you'll get the drugs and you'll get, you'll get all the money back. Yeah. So I say, well, if that's the way we can make the money back, that's the way we can make the money back. But I'm not taking you with me because you're a mess. So I break into this house. Yeah, yeah. And I search all, all around, but I can't find nothing. 
but I'm quite a determined individual. So I decided to wait for the man to come home. Yeah, and nab him when he comes through the front door. And, 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 cause I don't rob anybody that I know. Yeah, I only rob strangers. Yeah. And the door opens and it's our driver from the solid gold posse. When the solid, how people used to get a kitty to buy drugs is they used to rob banks. That's how you get your start. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the solid gold posse, yeah, yeah, were, were armed robbers, you understand? And Ricky, Ricky Gainer was the driver. Yeah. And I've seen Ricky, yeah, and I've grabbed Ricky by the arms and threw him to the floor. Yeah, right, because I want to get off. Yeah, because I'm not going to rob Ricky. He's reached up and he's pulled my mask off. And he's gone, Stephen, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, and in panic, I've whacked him with my bat and opened his face up and, right. then, and then got off. This is when my, my reputation first got ruined. Yeah. I've took off. Yeah. Um, I've gone and found Majid. He's now carrying a massive scar on his arm there and a massive scar on the back of his neck and he got run over. Yeah, yeah, right? I thought he was dead. Yeah, right? Because I wanted to go and see Ricky and say, I've killed him. Yeah, 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 for what he did. And, and yeah. I go to see Ricky at the hospital. Yeah. And I said, Ricky, Ricky, and he's, no, 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 no. Yeah. I used to wear a gold chain and the gold chain fell off and Ricky had the gold chain and Ricky sent me a message or got a message to me yeah that yeah that he wants two grand compensation for this face or the chain's going to the police yeah yeah right at that time my brother was my conciliary my brother was my my counselor and my advisor and I said he's not getting no fucking two grand off of me yeah you guys I didn't know that that was him and blah blah, blah. but he said, my brother said to me you whacked him in the face instead of just taking your mask off and going it's me which I should have done, but in the panic, I never. So I paid him the two grand. Yeah. I paid him to, I paid him to two, two grand. Yeah. Yeah. Mojid's come out of hospital. Yeah. Yeah. He's chopped there, chopped there. He's been, he's been run over. And he comes to my house. Yeah. Yeah. Unbeknownst to me, Ricky's in the bushes with the Webley. And then miss big massive bullets, yeah. Because my and this this is going to be seen in the movie, yeah. My enemies, he had no bullets for the gun. My enemies, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give him the bullets for the gun, and they don't know. I know it was them, right? Yeah, yeah. They'll know now because they'll know who they were to give it. But they give my enemy, they give Ricky the bullets because they wanted me dead. Ricky's in the bushes, yeah, by my house with the gun trained on me. Yeah, yeah, right. And Moji's saying to me, you rob Ricky, you rob Ricky. I said, and, but I'm at the door and I'm going, I wouldn't rob Ricky. Yeah, Ricky's our driver. That's why I've grabbed him and put him down. I'm running off panic. Now Ricky's in the bushes, because Ricky's told me this before he's killed our kid later on. And he's gone. He knows that's what's happened. He was there, I was there. So he knows that's the truth. So he loads his weapon and doesn't kill me. Yeah. My friend Sophie found that out of me. She's seen him in a party. She told me that he to told him that. Yeah. Then, whatever, whatever, I, I, I'm off on, in London on one of my excursions and I get caught. I get caught, I'm trying to blackmail somebody and I get caught and I end up in wearing with scrubs. Yeah. But then our kid's going to Ricky. You took two grand off him. What kind of gangster are you? If, if you don't pay me the money, I'm going to fucking police. I'm starts to pressure Ricky. Yeah. And, and takes the money back off him, Ricky gives him the money back. Now, the golden rule to taxing is only tax a man once. You can get him to wear that shirt once, but if you tax him twice, every time he thinks you're broke, you're gonna come to him. You're gonna make him do something. So Andrew, I took the two grand off him. So he's got the money back, but then Andrew went back I took his Mercedes off him. Yeah. 
Then Mr. Gainer, who was an old Jamaican, said to his son, you in Jamaica, I killed that man. You understand? I'm in prison. Um, and Ricky killed him. Shot him five times in the back. Yeah. Got arrested for it. Yeah, we were all in the court. Made a holy show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Snarling and bawling at him because he, he's in the dock and he ended up getting three years for manslaughter. You understand? Yeah, got, got, got three years for manslaughter. Yeah. Was then, was then sneaking around, sneaking around, sneaking around because um, um, he had a target on his back for what he did. Yeah. And, and uh, he's dead now. Yeah, he died in a fight. Yeah, and uh, but before he died, he was at a party, and my friend Sophie was at the party, and he told her that story. He said he told her that he had me in his sights, but and he was gonna, he was there to kill me. Yeah, yeah, right. But he didn't kill me because what I said rang true. Yeah, because Modji's going, you, Modji was a, a crackhead by now. Yeah, yeah, and he's saying. You, you knew, and I said to him, you told me it was a kid called Sean. You told me it was a kid called Sean, and I thought it was somebody called Sean. I'd never robbed Ricky, because Ricky, Ricky got me out of a tight situation in a car. Yeah, yeah, a couple of times, yeah. And he, he, was, he was the driver for the Solid Gold Posse. Andrew was on the Solid Gold Posse. Andrew went to jail, yeah, and I got a shot. I got a shot being on the Solid Gold Posse, and I did right. a little bit of work with them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So Ricky was all right, yeah. And our kid, our kid went back twice. Right. Yeah, yeah, right. And it took me a long time to be able to say that. Right. Yeah, 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 right. To be able to say that because he killed him. Right. Yeah. But this, this is the twist in the film. The f that wanted me dead, that gave him the bullets, yeah just wanted to pull Andrew away from me and have Andrew with them. You understand? Have Andrew with them. Yeah, uh, and the bullets that they thought was gonna end up in me ended up in Andrew. Right. You understand? Yeah, yeah, and they think I don't know that. Yeah, but that will be told in the movie. Yeah, that will be told in, in the Devil Decoded and I'll name them. Now's not the time to name them, but I'll, I'll name them so that they know. And the two big names, two huge names. But do you know, know what? They That's know a criminal connection exclusive. Yeah, it is. Um, but I'm excited about the, um, the the book and I'm excited about hopefully working with you on the film. But I mean, it, honestly, Frenchy, it's been great to meet you. It's been good to hear your stories. And I mean, you've had some life. Thank you've you, been sir. through. In terrible things, um, thank you, sir. but you know, I'm 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 glad you shared it, and uh, you know, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you, sir. Thank you uh, very much. Thank you so much for tuning in to the I Criminal can talk Con me, can I? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for tuning in to the Criminal Connection podcast. Stephen French, what an amazing guest. He was called the Devil, but now he's called the Fighting Preacher. Um, he has got a book that he's working on, so make sure you check that out when it gets released. He's working on a movie project, which I'm hopefully going to be involved in. And um, I mean, what a harrowing story. What an amazing story. Um, you know, and like Stevie said, monsters aren't born, they're created. So, um, you know, take that home and make sure you tune in next week. We've got another amazing guest. And make sure you like, subscribe and tell all your friends about the Criminal Connection podcast. We'll see you on the other side. Beautiful. Beautiful.